Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Big Thing to Mention, the only gaming podcast through the modern Gigabrain Gamer. I'm your host, Daniel Rutherford Video Games, and this evening we have with us our online co-hosts, as usual, KZ Excellent from KZExcellent.com. How are you today, sir? Uh, video games are canceled. And Mr. Feel from Mr. Feel's Wild Ride. Video games aren't canceled. I, I used the reversal card from Uno. Oh, no. Can we call him VidCon? We're going to have a good discussion. And uh, Bob from Ooh. Gigaboots. That was close. Video games were almost canceled just now, Dan. That would have been bad. Uh, good thing KZ's a liar. Well, we've got Not a lot of... time. <laughs> we've got a lot of gaming news to cover this week. So let's make this brief. Gentlemen, what are video games? Bob, we're going to start the discussion with you. Um... Uh, well, to answer about the, the question of what is video games, <laughs> you must first answer, uh, what is life, uh, what is a game, and what is the definition of video in this 15-hour dissert video dissertation, uh, I will be explaining all of these points through purely anecdotal evidence. It is um, objective. Dan was right. Video essays fucking suck. <laughs> oh my god. It's even better than an essay, though, KZ. It's a dissertation. I'm like really official now. Yeah, you know, you know what? I feel like people would really respect it if you had a foreign accent when you did that. Feel. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. I think this. I think this uh, voice is very good. It has the right energy for the the, the video essays. Uh, <laughs> I like cinematography. Cinematography is very good. All the respectable directors use cinematography. But, uh, Bob, I, I think we're going to try something different this week. Instead of opening with a 15-hour video essay of what are <laughs> video games, we're going to ask you, what have you been playing over the last what is, week? What is this hosting bit you're doing? <laughs> well, I I played a single race of Team Sonic Racing. <laughs> that was fun. Well, how did you like that, Bob? <laughs> well, it, it was online, right? You played no. AC oh. no, it was just the first story mission. <laughs> it was fun. Uh -huh. I'm I'm excited to play more of that game. Oh, good. That's that's great. I also <laughs> I also played uh, the mm -hmm. Capcom. I'm trying to remember the name of it, the the collection of fighter or Captain? beat 'em ups. Beat 'em up collection. Yeah, the beat 'em up uh, collection. Okay. Yeah, the beat 'em up bundle, as it were. As it were, yes. Um, there's some neat games on there. There's only a few that I would even like feel are super typical in the way they feel for a beat 'em up. Like there's Final Fight. Which is one of the first ones, so of course, it feels like really normal. And then there's also Captain Commando, but all the others are very strange. Like there's this warrior one based on Dungeon Dragons, and you're you don't have a combo. Oh yeah, it's not the it's not Those the one that's good. called Dungeon Dragons though. It's not the one done by that other company. Oh, yeah, it's, it's not uh, Chronicles of Mistara. It's, it's the, Shadows over Mistara. Is it the yeah, King of the Dragons? Uh, I think that's right. I'm trying to because they were locked. Because I think the King of Dragons was literally like. The Super Nintendo can't handle these Dungeons and Dragons ones. They it just can't. So we'll make like a, a similar get beat them up and put it on there. I remember that game being okay. Let's the, see. Um yeah, the King of Dragons, that's it. Um but yeah, you seriously have like your attack button is one hit, one swing. You don't do a combo or anything, you don't have throws. Most things die in one hit. Well. Then they're the levels are really short, and then you have a boss fight. And the bosses seemed like they were actually Somewhat well balanced for avoiding the hits. I got a few, or I think four or five stages in, and I probably only used like three continues. Hmm. Yeah, it was it was really neat. That's that's really cool. It's not often you see a retro arcade game that uh, actually properly balances to not just eat your quarters. I mean, this is literally from the same company that made Ghosts and Goblins, right? <laughs> so I think that's that's and really unique in that way. Then I tried Knights of the Round, which is based on like King Arthur and stuff. You get the mm -hmm. plays King Arthur, Lancelot, or one other guy. I don't remember who. Some dipshit. Uh, it's uh, uh, and it has Lancelot, <laughs> Galahad. Some dipshit. The yeah, Galahad. It's Galahad. Guy. And he's I don't like, think he's, it was, when did when did Sonic show up? Yeah, I think it's Galahad. And he's like Big Chungus. Like he's the he's the real he's the big boy. I do like me some Chung. But there, it has like a directional based system for it. So you literally like hit back and attack. And you can no, block it's, uh, it's Percival. I remember now. Percival is the big chungus guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I felt like I would remember it if Galahad was there. I don't remember. Yeah, it's Percival. Other mm -hmm. characters too yeah. well. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it 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 has a whole a big focus on using blocking, and it has some weird 
timer system and a, the concept of the, what you're doing as part of some bigger battle, which didn't seem like it was really anything more than just a, a, a what would you call that? Like a setting and not really something that's happening and you can affect just like, okay. Set this is, dressing, not yeah. an active mechanic. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so you were saying it's, it's more like a set dressing or? It's more like a set dressing. Oh, uh, okay. Hmm. But yeah, actually being able to, like, you have a really elaborate animation for turning around so you can do a special attack while you're in it. Oh, okay. And yeah, it's, it was really neat. Huh. I need to try these. Battle Circuit was also, wait, was it Battle Circuit or the Ar Armored Warriors? That one. That one you play as freaking giant mechs. <laughs> There's a button that you have for your Vulcan cannons, and it's really fast. You have, like, Jess Rusters. Like, these are really good. I was surprised. Yeah, I, but, I thought that there was going to be kind of just a plain bundle. Yeah, as of right now, this bundle's still on sale on uh, uh, Steam. It's 40% off, which makes it 12 bucks. It seems like a decent price. Did you play any uh, Captain Commando or whatever? I played a little bit of Captain Commando. It was, it was kind of just... It felt like a normal beat em up compared to the rest of these. Yeah. So I, I played a bit of it and was like, this is neat. Cap Commando can actually shoot a flamethrower as his jumping attack, which is hilarious. Yeah, you got, <laughs> uh, you also have the best character ever, Baby Commando, that is a baby piloting a mech suit. Yes. yes. <laughs> which is pretty cool. Um, what was it? Warriors. Did you get to play fate is like Battle a, Circuit? I played a little Battle Circuit. Battle Circuit seems insane and I want to play more of it. It seems I played like Battle Circuit in 2008 or something and really enjoyed that. That I remember it being fun with friends. I think I played it on like MAME. It's from right. that, um, yeah, it's from that era where they were they did really good beat em ups, but you don't get to play most of them because they were licensed for Alien versus Predator or, yeah, uh, Willow Cadillacs and Dinosaurs, which is the weirdest one because they just picked a random comic that was not popular. Bob, why did you laugh when I said Willow? Because the thought of them doing a beat em up for that. Did that happen? Uh, there is a Willow arcade game. Yeah, yeah. but it's God, not a beat -em. I know about a Willow NES game. Yeah, it's not a beat em up, but uh, it is made by Capcom. Weird. But yeah, um, the, uh, that one, Battle Circuit has that thing where you get to buy new attacks at the end of each stage mm -hmm. and really crazy character designs. But uh, I think that. Warriors of Fate was neat because the whole thing seemed like it was based around riding a horse while doing a beat em up game. Oh, yeah, I was seeing that. Yeah, that, that one is like set during the Three Kingdoms era of China. So it's kind of like feels very Dynasty Warriors ish. But yeah, if I were to compare the Willow Arcade, arcade game to anything, it would be kind of like a Ghosts and Goblins, except for you use a normal physical attack instead of throwing everything. You know? Oh, that's neat. Yeah. But yeah, I definitely suggest anybody wants. Who likes those beat em ups? That's a, that's a legit bundle. Yeah, it's a good collection. It's got good stuff. Uh, I think it's six games total. Put out a Is second right? one with the licensed ones. You got one of them back already. <laughs> Seven games. Seven games. Hey, yeah. that's not bad for twelve bucks. The ad especially. they did for the beat em up collection was also <laughs> incredible. <laughs> yeah, was really that really was that was <laughs> fucking something. Where it's just like, like no, you're even in the if future. there was no game, it was worth it just for that. He's like, you're in the future now, kid. Your parents are dead. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's pretty much everything I played. When are these video game ads going to stop appealing to male power fantasies of going to the future and your parents being dead? <laughs> no, you're, the, the appeal there is you get to be Captain Commando, send kids to the future so their parents are dead. <laughs> Okay, that actually is a power fantasy. I love it. I, I, am, I am fantasizing about that at this very moment. <laughs> like the most fucked up interpretation of Peter Pan that has ever existed. He's gotten too old. Peter Pan, but raw. He's gotten too old. Send him to the future where his parents are dead. Is Peter Pan, but raw just Hook? I haven't. I haven't watched Hook in a billion years. I remember Hook being good. I I don't. Yeah, I don't think it was received well good. when it came when it came out. But I'm like, oh, it's per perfectly fine movie. You should give the SNES game a chance. Uh, if I'm going to give any game a chance, it's going to be the Sega CD one with its orchestral soundtrack. Thank Ooh. you. Of course, the, of course, you know that that exists. <laughs> <laughs> Look, man, we, we ordered that Mega SD, which is the Sega CD replacement uh, in a cartridge for the Genesis. In a can. In a can. Uh, and I, I like just bagged needed, milk. I need to... <laughs> 
It is kind of like that in that it's like you never expected this, but now that it's here, we're all dealing with it. Yep, but it, and it's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, the Sega CD is raw. It is not wrong. Okay, um, you're right. The Sega <laughs> yeah, the Sega CD. <laughs> hey, when hey, your man. full stream playthrough of Sewer Shark. Uh, why, Bob? What's with his tone? Do you think Casey has tone control problems? I just no. I he th- said it as though he thought it was a joke and not happening. I don't know. That was on the borderline for Casey. Uh, no, I think this he is how it, it works. It's a joke until it happens. <laughs> Then it's the realest shit on the block. Probably only like an hour long. I think I like we could do it. Let me let me explain. I grew up with the Sega CD. Sewer Shark was one of the games I owned. This isn't a joke. <laughs> this is a sorry, threat. Dan. <laughs> no, what you should be sorry about. Oh, Dan. What you should be sorry about is the Power Rangers game. That thing is hilariously awful. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do a retro roulette. Whenever that arrives, I feel like all all uh, FMV games were, were just like designed to exploit children because they see it in their brains break. I mean, Raw. the Power Rangers game was definitely that. Uh, Dragon's Lair wasn't coded right, so it just doesn't work. Um, what was that crazy car one? The car one I still haven't tried to this day, but that one seems pretty awesome. Uh, having seen it billions of times on GameSack's channel. Um, but uh, Revenge of the Ninja is fucking dope. That is a bomb ass FMV game. You know, you get to play as Ninja Hayate. It looks like it's animated what by God. the guys who do Lupin. Yeah, it looks like it was uh animated by them. It's pretty good. Uh, but uh, so did you play anything else, Bob? No, I don't think so. Though. I think that do, was that was it. Do you think in the next week you'll get around to playing a second race? Maybe one on more Team Sonic Racing. <laughs> I'll report back on my, I have my second copy. race. Okay, that's that's good. Hey, you know, we could race KZ. Oh, man. How, I have it. How tempting. I played it with no one I know. <laughs> Is it because they all got Crash Team Racing instead? Uh, No, just no one bought this. Oh, okay. No, no one I'm bought interested either. in that Crash Team Racing. I've heard it's pretty good. Eric seems to be pretty glowing about it. You know, the best part is one of the processes of editing this podcast is I reduce the silence. <laughs> so the audience has no idea, realistically. You have no idea if it was eight <laughs> seconds or 35 seconds, <laughs> or, and you just left me se- hanging on that one. <laughs> Several minutes, even. <laughs> That's the way the sweatpants fold. <laughs> yep, exactly. Man, folding your sweatpants, that's fancy. Hey. Anyway. <laughs> You don't just leave it. I iron heat. them. Weird. Yeah, you don't just leave them on the ground. That's strange. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like we're gonna end up checking out Crash Team Racing sometime soon. Got to compare the input latency neat. to the original uh, and the PS2 one that they put out. That one's and not the GBA real. One. No, it's not. No one. There's, no one acknowledges. There's, there's not a GBA one. You made that up. He's making that up. That PS2 one actually does have some stuff from it in the new game. Oh. So they acknowledge that one. Yeah. He didn't which make it up. It's funny because even Eric even yeah, Eric Crash is Nitro uh, car for the GBA. What? <sighs> Why is that real? All right, it's kind of fucked up that I that I Google Crash GBA Racing and the first result is from ROMs Mania. <laughs> oh, yeah. That that sounds like Well, life. nobody played it, so somebody on Twitter right now is saying it's the best one. That's how it, uh, we are talking about Crash Team Racing, right? Then, yeah, that sounds about right. What? Fans that are incredibly loud and say it's the best? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm just connecting some dots. I'm not trying to make a larger statement here. Anyways, uh, I guess since Bob's done talking about what he's played, uh, we'll, we'll ask Mr. Feel what he's played next. Mr. Feel, uh, The only thing I playing? played was Judgment. I had to crank that out. Uh, I 100% those games, so I usually just focus on them. That game is good, but has a lot of things I wish weren't in it. Like the tailing missions. I heard those are good. You're just not patient. Which are yeah, those look so, so good. bad. Uh, and, and they never end. Okay, I have to know. Yeah. Days Gone tailing missions or these tailing missions? Which is worse? The Days Gone ones, because those are easier to fail. Okay. The the judgment ones are literally imp- especially if you spend one hundred experience, which is nothing, to buy the upgrade that makes the your your mark is looking at you meter go up slower. It 
because it because it knocks it down to like twenty percent of its previous speed. So it's just like it's just so they're so boring and there's so many. I was right up against the finale and it was like, no, do this. I was like, I don't want to. You got to. You need to get the You info. could replace every single one of those with the cutscene and the game would go up a point. Wow. And it's just, like, it's the combat system is unbalanced because you have a tiger style and crane style, which are the two fighting styles for single target versus multiple targets, except none of the upgrades apply to crane style. It gets nothing. So That's even by mid weird. the middle of the game, it, uh... It's like switch out, just just use Tiger Style for everything, because Tiger Style is the one that gets the uh, the chargeable attacks that you can't stagger when you're charging them, or the like the attacks where you hit them with a thing and then you do a quick QTE prompt and it like launches them, and and Crane Style just gets none of that, so that isn't very balanced. And I, this is purely a me being OCD thing, but the way it gives out um side missions in other games you have to like wander around and run into the side missions uh you sometimes you can get an upgrade that will show you where they start in this game they're all from a list on the bo on a board in three locations and they're gated by how many friends you make in game with the npcs so it feels weird to gate them because it's like you have now you have fractal side quests sort of where you have to do a different set of side quests to unlock the other set of side quests that that just seem annoying it i i fit it none of them were as annoying as like i i've beat to beat the seek to fight the secret boss in a yakuza game you have to get 100 percent completion that's almost always the case you have to do every single uh they're called sub story i have not done it in yakuza 2 or yakuza 0 because those are the two games where they tie it real hard into the, uh... In Yakuza 2, they, they tie it into an, into an atrocious host minigame. And in Yakuza 0, they attach two of the submissions in Yakuza 0 are... Did you guys see the uh, phone minigame where he answers the phone real dramatically? <laughs> no. <laughs> I think I saw that in one yeah, trailer. It's, it's, yeah, there's a, uh, there's a minigame where it's like, you go to a booth and you talk to a girl on a phone in a booth and it's like you're trying to hook up with her and the joke is there's 12 potential girls three of them are hot and those give you sub stories if you get them but nine of them aren't and those get you nothing except a scene of the protagonist trying to run away somehow <laughs> okay the, which one you get are random and i you can't i cannot tell by their voices like there's no way to tell which of these 12 people are in a language you don't speak. So I never did it in Yakuza 0 because I, I just could not do the last one. I could not get it no matter how many times I did it. But in this one, I managed to do it, so it isn't that bad. Uh, that secret boss, by the way, drops the PS4 Pro to about four frames per second. <laughs> oh, good. Mm. Send it to Digital Foundry. Because he, uh... <laughs> the secret bosses are where the, they, go in, they go full anime. Like, uh, the one in 6 just had an orbital laser that would, like, cut a line across the arena. And, uh, one in Yakuza 5 had Virgil summoned swords, except they were umbrellas. Okay. So the one in this has a similar thing, where he fires a trillion things at you, and the frame rate goes to shit. Uh, story-wise, the story's pretty good, all the characters are pretty good, except it's supposed to be a mystery but it feels like in the last 10 minutes they go, oh shit, there's these these details we didn't flesh out. It was this. <laughs> it's in the better half of the series, I'd say, so it's still worth playing. Yeah, I really want to try that one out because it's the first one in a long time that's got like a full dub and everything. I'm excited to try that. That's all I played. So KZ, while I finish remembering the litany of things I played in the last week. <laughs> Ooh, a litany. Uh, I'm exaggerating. You, uh, <laughs> you want to talk about what you've been playing? Ah, oh, wonderful. Hello there. Hi. <laughs> How's it going? I played a litany of video games, Dan. Oh, wow. That's a good word. Yeah. I played uh, Super Mario Maker 2. That mm. recent release came oh, yeah. out in between uh, in between recordings, recordings of the podcast. Yeah, that's true. I've been uh, playing levels, making levels. It's been a, it's been a good time. Have, have you played any user-created uh, levels, KZ? Uh, I have, actually. You mentioned uh, the war zone. <laughs> the, there are some bad, bad stuff. 
and I'm playing one now that, that a YouTuber has made, which is a Mario 3D World style level where it's a long line of spike blocks and you travel across them by bouncing on a bully enemy, but you have to do it at an angle so it pushes to the right, so you have to keep bouncing on them. There's some, there's some levels in this in this video game that are yeah. something. Uh, Bob and I have actually done two live shows with that now, and uh, I played some uh, single player you, on apparently that. Apparently, the second one was good. I completely missed that stream. Mm. How was it, Bob? Uh. When KZ asked, when KZ asked me earlier how it went, I said in the in the words of Yoshi P, nightmare. <laughs> there's gonna be there's gonna be more rules in the next one, isn't there? <laughs> you see, I opted into just submitting my levels with your form for them to just be in videos. Yeah, um, that may be the better way to go. <laughs> yeah, I sent a couple of a couple of levels there because I made a couple more and. I really enjoyed the tools. It took a little bit of getting adjusted to how it works on a controller as opposed to uh, using the touch stuff, but it does feel good now that I've gotten used to uh, what buttons do what and how to how to get to everything. And I'm really, really satisfied with the, the game overall. Uh, the online is hilarious. Just sometimes you will get thrown into a game where... Uh, you start moving through the level, but the countdown hasn't ended yet because the countdown took 25 seconds and the game gave up. What? And you're moving one or two frames a second because some oh. dude has, like, the worst internet imaginable. But heaven forbid you just play with your friends. But then you get other ones where the game runs at 60 FPS and feels perfect. So it's just yeah, Russian roulette. Yeah. Looking forward to when friend lobbies are added since, you know, everything seems to run fine, uh... With all of my friends, except when I forget that I'm not wired. <sighs> yeah. That may have happened today. Don't worry about it. <laughs> forget uh, is a word that means you, it's didn't, all, it's, you didn't know what I, you were doing to other people. I feel like you're you're really being generous to yourself using that word. It sounds like someone's pretty bitter. Mm, that's okay. <laughs> but yeah, I played, I played a lot of Mario Maker 2. I thought it was, I think it's fantastic. Really enjoying it. I'll be coming back to it a lot. Um, input lag. Yeah, there's input I lag. We're going to prove it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't think anyone was really challenging you <laughs> that there was no input lag in I don't Super know. Mario Maker 2, Dan. It sounds like someone needs to calm down. <laughs> oh, I don't know what you're talking about. Just someone said it feels perfect. <laughs> no, it feels... Mm-hmm. The way I expected it to feel. Of course, hmm. there's input lag. I've ex I've expected that. I don't have a wired pro controller, <laughs> so naturally Stop there's plenty of input lag. Pro controller. I don't if care only if I, all I but it cuts down the input latency so much. You are criminals. <laughs> you stop telling these poor people that that works. That adds I'm sorry, input. but you're the one who started this. How do you know it doesn't, Dan? You've never tested it. I have True, tested, you have never it. tested it. We have tested it, and we know for a fact it adds input lag. You're going to have to test it with this Mario Maker 2 <laughs> video. I am, I am <laughs> not doing that. <laughs> oh, man, you know why? Because you're afraid. <laughs> I'm not dignifying those psychopaths with an inch of conversation. <laughs> I'm just going to fucking tell them how it is, and if they want to prove me wrong, they need to go buy an even fancier camera than me. Uh, but Masters yeah, I, of negative content. I feel like there's more input lag. Like I would wager one to two, maybe two and a half frames over Mario Maker one, which is weird. I didn't expect that. Um, I, I I don't understand all these Switch games having more input lag than their Wii U counterparts. That it's confusing as fuck. I'm worried. Maybe it's all a myth. I'm really worried, Bob, that they're doing this because they are hoping it will c cover the in network latency. This is Nintendo's uh, way of doing no. right. This is Nintendo's way of doing good online. Yeah, tons of input buffering, and on top of that, additional input lag. You know, I was gonna say the reverse happens where I don't notice the internal like input latency because sometimes a uh, match will go in super slow motion <laughs> <laughs> because there's like this eight year old is on like dial up and Boy, is refused to kick him out. 
look, he wants to play online, but his dad said he and his Nintendo Switch need to wear aluminum t- tin foil hats just to keep the government out of their brain. So ranked in this game is uh, the multiplayer versus mode, which is just ranked, is uh, a mess in the fact that the only person who gets something is the person who wins. Yeah, it's really fucked up. Wow. So, so, so you'll run into situations where, uh, for example, uh, the goal is like, all right, open this. Uh, you beat the boss. So you're able to clear through this. You open this door and then you hit the flagpole. And, uh, oh, someone jumped on your head after you did all the work and they win. What? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I don't... I don't know why you would ever dignify this mode with calling it ranked. That just seems not in the spirit of... Okay, I loaded it. Why can you interact with each other? Oh, yeah, that's the whole point. It's It's like New Super Mario Bros. Wii. That sounds terrible. You jump on each other's heads, you can throw a shell, and it will hurt other people. That sounds really terrible. I thought this was just a fucking race. It is. Yeah, it, yeah. It's like if you ha- if you're at the Olympics and you watch the hundred meter dash and somebody swings a bottle backwards as they run. <laughs> yeah, it's that's... all fair game. <laughs> Why didn't all of them bring uh, a bottle? <laughs> for the most part, I was like, okay, I'm getting into this when it runs fine. But then there, there are mo- <laughs> the funniest ones are when it's uh. You gotta, you gotta defeat the enemy and then get the key off them and then open the door. And you see the other three people just waiting for you to do it. They're just waiting at that door. <laughs> yeah, because they all get the key when he dies. Oh my God. Yeah, because only one person gets credit. Only one. Everyone else loses points. They, they just lose those points. Yeah, I don't know why this is called ranked. This is insanity. Just the fact, and the fact, not only is this an insane mode, the fact Nintendo was like, this the the integrity of this mode means we can't let you play with your friends is insane. <laughs> now you just queue it up I, and it go, takes you to a random level, right, KZ? Yeah, it just it randomly queues up some <laughs> some like, level. Uh, I, uh, they give priority to ones that I believe are tagged as multiplayer versus. <laughs> okay, because that's what I figured it was. But I the, this yeah, and, and hope it of, does oh, like it, internal stuff like uh. All power up blocks just become four, so people can continue to uh, to like jump on them. So it's not like you have to race to get the one power up that exists. I mean, that's good, I guess. Um, yeah, I'm just waiting for you know when the, the when the friends mode appears. But also, I'm still kind of grinding at this because I I don't know there might be a good shirt. They gi- they give you clothing I mean, off. Those shirts are fucking amazing. They, they are really good. The, like the animated sprite ones, Big yeah, of they may be better than the game. Yeah, they. Mm, <laughs> yeah, um. uh, depend depends on what kind of levels you're playing. I'm playing a lot of fun levels. Sometimes I go in the popular tag and see what the most popular levels are. They're all very pleasant, interesting. Oh, that's fresh. that's good. That's great. That's uh not not meant to upset me. Oh, that's that's really great. I'm happy for you. Uh. But yeah, that's that's Mario Maker 2. Uh, the only other thing uh, I played is uh, I continued to uh, chip away at uh, Final Fantasy 14. Mm-hmm. The new the new expansion's out, and uh, well, well, I finished the previous expansion that came before it, and I have to go through the story content that came after that one's initial launch. And once I beat that, I can enter the new stuff they put out, and uh, <laughs> the. The end boss of the previous expansion is uh, quite good. I went at it for the first time. And I was like, hey, I'm new, I'm new to this thing. Anything I should know? No one responded. I guess because they assumed it would be the easiest thing to just go through it. Uh, over half the party died in the first 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> because it has a uh, occasional bosses in that have a move where the they'll do like a shock wave or some big thing. And you just fall off the platform. <laughs> So four people just fell off and died. That will be awkward all, to try and explain anything. It was fine as, as, as soon as I realized, oh, it's one of those. It, we immediately got uh got adjusted to it. But it, I love the times they don't even attempt to explain because you get you get different varieties of people when playing this game. You get people that are incredibly detailed, like, all right, for this, avoid this. They're going to do that. Aim for this spot. And uh, do the usual thing you would do. And other people going, whatever, it's fine. 
I'm going to pull four or five encounters in this dungeon all in a row. <laughs> and we're just going to hope that we live through it. And if we do that, we've saved like seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, you know what? I, res- I respect I respect the speed run mentality. Are you in what what because what expansions content are you in? Uh, I'm in Stormblood. I just finished that story, and now they have like the patch stories where they would like every few months add more story content to it. Yeah, they it, they add like a more story. Cause even playing WoW, that was always a problem. Where it's like, how the fuck is a new player supposed to learn how to play the game? Because old content is trivialized by balance changes, even if you're an appropriate level for it. Every single time a new thing comes out, so it's just like. People just blast through that once the next thing comes out. I think 14 handles it well in terms of, like, getting through the old stuff. Just because it's uh, before you would go through the main quests of the game. And that wouldn't be enough to just doing only those. Because you'd eventually go, you have to be this level to do this. And you're not that level yet. And they said, all right, we'll just boost the experience on those parts. Now that we have enough content, we don't need to throttle you through anything necessarily. And just between that and how they constantly have roulettes where you can queue up for one of those to get bonus experience, even in the late game. And it'll just throw you in old dungeons and it's a way to continue to populate them that I feel like in general, it works pretty okay for the most part of just getting into it and uh, getting used to the stuff. They have boosting now. I wonder also. if they uh, ever fixed the problem with the the Realm Reborn story dungeons at the very end, because their initial fix was unbelievably stupid. So, so they're they're the final dungeon of uh, Final Fantasy XIV's like main story for a Realm Reborn. They did something pretty ambitious, where usually the the dungeon is here's the dungeon. There's like three bosses in it. Um, like a cutscene at the start to show you what the area looks like, a cutscene at the end to show the boss like transform and appear. And then you're done, you leave, and a cutscene plays. The final dungeon of a realm reborn instead said, What if we put in like twelve cutscenes in the dungeon that total about forty forty to forty five minutes? Look, they just wanted to make a real Final Fantasy game and now, No, that's now, not the stupid part, because you can skip all these cutscenes, which um, yeah, yeah, leads they, to they, the they, they're late. which leads to the part it, the kinda it, shitty thing where a new player will like come out of the a uh, cutscene and half the dungeon will be finished. Yeah, so yeah. my first experience on this final thing was I watched the first cutscene went, This is cool. Where is everyone? Oh, they hit a boss. Oh, the boss is locked out now because it's been twenty seconds since they entered the encounter. They don't want people like you know, exploiting it, so they, they don't do, want they have, like, spawn rush the boss. Yeah, they don't want that in there. And there's a lot of cool stuff you get on like mechs during one segment. There's like a there's you're you're hacking into stuff. There's multiple boss fights, and you're not having a good experience. Now they heard people's concerns. It's like not everyone is in a guild or a free company, as it's called there, and you can like get a specific party that's going to help you through it because it's also eight people. It's hard to organize that. So they're like, what if we made it so it's impossible to skip cutscenes and all the dialogue in those cutscenes are set to auto advance so they always end at the same time for everyone. I'm sure people so love that. So if anyone that. gets cued into that, you're just locked in for the hour. Yeah, that's not now, that now, was not a that uh, was yeah, not a graceful you know, solution. Phil, they have they have not changed that. That is still how that works. Ooh. I learned this by doing the roulette, which is the thing of just Why queuing up for something that randomly picks it. Yeah, it randomly picks a, a, a It's one of those things where it's like, to, to, to make sure that all the dungeons have people doing them, it's like, do a dungeon, and if it's a low-level one, they, they right. uh, sink you, and you get, like, a bonus if you do it. You get, like, a daily. Right, yeah. but that and one should be locked off if it's like that. That's insane. Uh, it, oh, it is, it I is, think. It, it is. is. It's in story it is, it roulette, is. and there's also leveling roulette, which is not included. Yeah, it's it's in its own separate category. There's like eight, maybe seven or eight different roulettes. I picked that one because I was like, I'm catching up. I forget what's in this one. <laughs> and then it did that, and people went, hey, what's up? How you doing? <laughs> no one there was new either. So it was eight people who've already done it. <laughs> and we were just making small talk for an hour. <laughs> this is a nightmare. Have they uh, introduced that, um, like, the weird help you through the main story NPC thing yet? 
I feel like they were going to do that at some point, and I don't know if it ever actually. I know that's out. supposed to be in this new expansion. I don't know if. Oh yeah, the new expansion is introducing something really cool called trust, where when you queue up for a dungeon, you could queue with people, or here's all the main characters of the story. Oh, you that's just queue with really them. Really good. So it's like all the characters you've been hanging out with for years are just cl they're just they're classes, and you play with them, and you can do it for every dungeon. That's actually really good. Uh, I have heard that once you beat the main story of Shadowbringers, the current expansion, they say, all right, we've now leveled them down to like 71, which is the starter. You got to level them up again, which all that tells me is, all right, whoever I want to max, I'm just going to run it like this. Yeah, it, but it's it probably makes... so you can't like farm dungeons for gear by yourself. Yeah, they, they also like cut the gear chance in half just because you can just press one button and boom, you're in there. So that's a lot easier, especially if you're like a DPS, which which I am. Yeah, the it's DPS must get. have been why they did it, because because the, the thing is, is that babies always play DPS like KZ. So there's 800 trillion of them for each healer and tank. It's not my fault. All the really cool classes keep being put into DPS. So okay? you so you play healer and ta or tank and, and you get your dungeon instantly. But if you're DPS, you have to wait yeah. 15 hours. Yeah, sometimes you'll wait 40 minutes, but with this trust system, you can just str immediately jump in. So that has me uh, excited for that, because it means I'll probably grind more just doing dungeons instead of side quests, because there's no aspect of waiting. Do they have any ETA on when that's coming out? Uh, it's just out. Like, it comes, it's specific to the current expansion. I don't know if they'll roll that back. They said oh. they've been thinking about rolling other stuff back. Like, they're adding New Game Plus to this MMO what? so that you can do the main story <laughs> again with other classes so that they can level faster because they they're like, uh, maybe you want to experience the story again. And then this gives a lot of experience. So, you know, your old your your older classes can do something, you know, interesting. Also, I guess for people who ended up boosting and maybe they want to, like, actually experience the story after, you know, I, you hastily know, I was, jumping in. I was wondering. When they add all these new classes, do you just have access to them from the beginning of the game, or do you have to go do some special quest to get them? It, it depends. It's location-based. Uh, the way it works is you pick your starting class, and that you start in the city that that class starts in. Then you can go to the other you go to the other cities at some point. You can just talk to the class trainer and get access to that class, except for like the advanced ones. So, because okay. like Final Fantasy, it's like job classes, and they do it there where you. Go into a building, and you're like, I want to be a Lancer. They're like, okay. <laughs> and, then, and then they're like, all right, put on this weapon. You're this class now. Yeah, your weapon, and then the, later way, you uh, the way that your class, you switch classes just by changing your weapon once you have access huh. to the class. And then you can set preset uh, gear sets, and then just with one button, you're changing to that. And then the jobs are the more advanced versions where they give you a special item. Okay, Some so what started? I, yeah, you have, to, you have to get. I like, assume level that most of those forty, most of those new things they add, like that, say that whatever they've added most recently, the ones they advertise. Yeah, they like added Samurai Gunblade stuff. as as a class and um, dancer. Those are, are those, the two ones specific to the new expansion. And then last are they expansion, jobs they, or they gave classes? You samurai wasn't Samurai and Red Mage with Stormblood. Yes. But yeah, so the, are those like advanced uh, they ones start, where you have to, you don't start get the, the start level. character? They start, they, uh, Red Mage starts at 50, so you, yeah, would, I like, forget, it, I, it's the, it, the usual thing MMOs do is, like, when they add a new class, you start at, like, the level cap from the two expansions back, so you have to go through the previous one before getting to the new one. Huh. Like when yeah, uh, some, of these la some of these later classes just started at a later level, so, for example, like, you pick up uh, one, you don't start at level one for Dark Knight. You start at, I think it's like 30. So you like, you put on the piece of equipment they have, which is like the Dark Knight crystal. And then it just makes you level 30, gives you your abilities, and then you start leveling up. All right. But I'd say it's like the easiest w game to multi class and figure out exactly what you're comfortable with. Yeah, it starts at level I 30. Can't... So it's like how uh, in, in WoW. In the second expansion, they gave you Death Knights, but Death Knight started at uh, level... When you finished the Death Knight intro era, you were level 60, so you could go right into Burning Crusade, which was the first expansion. Yeah, it's all real real easy to, like, jump into, I'd say. Where you don't you don't feel like you're trapped when, when you start 
something, it's really easy to just change exactly what you're doing. Or the insane people go, I want to max everything. I mean, there's numbers. Those numbers should be higher. Yeah, all also, also, like, you don't have a base level. All your levels are tied to classes. So if you, huh. you know, even if you're level 70, which I think is the cap now, you, you change to uh, a class you don't 80. have, you're back to one. Yeah, unless you like change to one of these like advanced ones that have come later, yeah. and they start at whatever. Or they unless were, you uh, buy a uh, buy a good boy potion. Yeah, you, <laughs> good you, boy potion. You, look at this good boy getting himself stronger. You buy the Pay thing that uh, continues to finance this game because, despite being the most profitable thing Square Enix has, they still don't give it a real budget. This game is doing incredibly well right now, and the fact that I looked it up. Almost every server is congested. I mean, it is a new expansion coming like, out. Like they're getting like they're getting hammered harder than they have been in recent times. And this time they didn't get DDoS, which helps. That does where help. Their, where their servers completely buckled down and there was a specific instance main quest that you had to queue into and people couldn't get into it for multiple days. So everyone was just stuck like a fifth of the way through the expansion. That happened. In the last one, it was, yeah, it was, yeah, I heard about that. It's rough. Like I just, it's I just great. dropped, I just dropped it for a few months because I was just like, I, I, I can't get past, <laughs> I can't get past this one guy. I should probably re up soon. It, it is, uh, it is really good, and it, it has been consistently good. And everyone I know who has played the expansion said this might be the best Final Fantasy story they've that they've done. Just period. Spanning the whole series. Yoshi P well, likes really to flex. Too. Yeah, they kind of compared it to like the Kingdom Hearts level of payoff, where they actually really went in hard on this one. So I'm excited to see that. I just have to continue to catch up. But that's it for me. Okay, that's cool. Uh, yeah, most of my 4th of July was actually spent with Jim Ratgazer and uh, my brother, and also uh, Tosh, but she's not playing, uh, talking about uh, Final Fantasy 14 and stuff. Uh, my brother's wife yeah. was showing Tosh uh, that game you're gonna the, play, right? The crops they were growing and stuff. I'm just gonna ignore Casey, and then everyone will go. Casey never said anything. <laughs> if I just it. if I just talk over him, maybe I should just delete it. Maybe I should. <laughs> Don't make me run a bit. <laughs> it's too late. It already happened. Uh, oh but, no! <laughs> but uh, yeah. So, so it's okay. It's a joke. You have no time. <laughs> yeah. No. I. I refuse on a on a fucking ethical basis to play an MMO. Ethical, it's not happening. Yeah. Ethical basis. Uh huh. Absolutely o Overwatch not gonna play an MMO. Though. Yeah. Overwatch is fine. You know why? I quit it. <laughs> Again. I quit this yeah, pretty I, often. <laughs> I I. <laughs> I didn't play Overwatch for a good year and a half straight, and then when I did play, it was like for not even a week. Um, it it kind of helps that the console versions of Overwatch feel like shit in comparison, but you know. So like, I can't play Overwatch I while my PC is rendering. I like at all when I played on PS4. Mm-hmm. You're right. You pushed the button, and it instantly happened. You got yep, it, sweetie. It, I was about to say, yeah, that's exactly how it works. I bet you were using the wired PS4 controller, too. <laughs> no, I couldn't afford it. <laughs> you couldn't afford the cable? How are you keeping it charged? <laughs> no, I thought you meant there's like a straight up permanently no. wired. No, if you, uh, if you have one of the newer DualShock 4s, which a PS4 Pro should have come with it, you can hook it up with a USB cable, and because a bunch of people at tournaments and other things complained uh, that they wanted it to work via wired, it does, and it has worse input lag. <laughs> so just but yeah, like, I, I connect it to a wire to charge it, and then go, why is this micro USB? Why have you forsaken us? Why does yeah, the battery life forward. last for five hours? Yeah, that's a better question. I'm it's shocked. okay, it charges really fast. I'm shocked that we only went through... Uh, what was it? We we didn't even have to go through two full charges during the Final Fantasy VII stream. Speaking of which, You're right. that's something I've been playing over the last week. Have you guys heard about this? It's, no, it's I can't Final remember any of it. Fantasy VII. Feel remembers like none of that. Casey stream. keeps saying things from him like I I vaguely remember. It turns out when the moment you're off off air, you immediately fall asleep for nine hours. You tend yeah. not to remember <laughs> things. Mm -hmm. One. Yeah. One lightweight two this is how that stream ended 
You're like, all right, thanks for coming. Bye. You hit offline. Feels like, oh, we off? Yeah. Okay. Click. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what happened. Mother- I immediately, I didn't even get undressed. I <laughs> fell on my bed. T- five seconds later, I was like, I better, I better take off my clothes and adjust myself so I'm comfortable. And I lifted my body and went, why is the sun on the wrong side? Oh, fuck. It's 5 p.m. <laughs> 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 I'm so disappointed in you. Only nine hours. Well, well, I felt bad that I only did thirteen. I went back. I went back to sleep six hours later and slept for twelve. Good. Uh, yeah, Bob. I wish sleep, I did man. that. Yeah, no, Bob's pretty obvious right now. <laughs> oh, um, poor Bob. We got to do four seven. podcasts tonight. But it was literally like I blinked and and nine hours went away. Yeah, yeah. that's how it feels. It's a good sleep. It is. <laughs> It's a really good salute. Um, but yeah, we did the Final Fantasy VII all single pl- stream playthrough. That was an endeavor. Uh, we survived thanks to the help of Spaceman Spiff and Mr. Feel having gone through it recently. Uh, Spaceman got to co-host in person where uh, his knowledge of beating the game eight fucking times really helped out there. Yeah, he knew so. a bunch of shit even I didn't know. Getting getting the ability to nuke people from the omnipotent sand serpent was really fucking helpful for grinding. Yes. And I, yeah, that was... The infinite mega elixirs was cool. <laughs> yeah, that was also a neat trick. Uh, the smile on Yuffie's <laughs> face was quite good as she defeated Sephiroth. Yeah, Yuppie <laughs> doing the face cam smile as she obliterated Sephiroth was <laughs> really incredible. Uh, it was a good stream. If you haven't seen it, the archive should be up on YouTube sometime soon, if it isn't already. Um, but I've actually been playing other things over the last week. Uh, I've Ooh. been playing, for those who don't know about game sen- uh, Retro Game Challenge, that is the game as it was brought over to America based on Game Center CX, the show hosted by Feels uh, Real Life icon. Avatar. <laughs> And uh, yep. spirit animal Ari no Cacho. Um, it's a uh, it's a pretty good game, and I've owned that for years. Uh, I finally got the ability to play uh, games on my DS that are tactically acquired, and as such, I was finally able to play a translation of the sequel. Yeah, uh, we Thank never got God. the sequel because, like, uh, I forget who pu- we see who published it in the United States. Yeah, I can't. It, what, what was it? Xseed? Yeah, it was Xseed. I think Xseed they, published they, the first one. They said one, yeah. on it. They said once what it was like. We can't say the sales numbers, but they're crushingly depressing. Yeah, and that's fucked up. Because had I known what that was back then, I would have bought it in a heartbeat. When I bought it years later, it was amazing. I really love that game. Nintendo just, DS having flash carts like really fucked up niche niche games on the fucking DS. I mean, I don't even know if that's what that suffered from. I think it's from, like, if you look at pictures of what the game is, you don't understand what it's like to play it. You just assume it's a bunch of hack job, low quality games. I mean, I, I'm i going to say so because this was back then was when 4chan was a really big, you know, was one of the biggest online communities. And they constantly had flashcart general with like 800 replies posting screenshots of yeah, this game. But like, so I definitely think it suffered a lot because of flashcards. I, I'm just saying as a, as a game in the market uh, for the DS, I, I think most people would look at the cover for this game and look at what it looks like. Yeah, and then not be interested. Maybe even, yeah, because yeah, it sounds I've, like it's just a collection of fake old games and you assume they're going to play like shit and that it's just like... You assume it's a much worse product than it is based on its description. Playing I mean, just it, looking at it—that's yeah. what it looks like. That's what it I, looks I like. I keep thinking of like how how Game Center CX could have done really well in a block alongside Mystery Science Theater. Yes, like if that were just playing on Sci-Fi every weekend, that game would have done great. <laughs> uh, true, yeah. If we went back and rewrote history to make Arino an international sensation, <laughs> yes, <laughs> of the likes of Mystery Science. I mean, he Science was Theater. in Mario Maker One. Yeah, I he hope was. They, I hope they add that again at some point. Yeah, I just, uh, I love Game Setter CX. Um, I haven't watched it all, and I really need to go watch more of it. Kind of getting the craving gotta right sure, now. Gotta watch all the quiz episodes, which are the best ones. I, wait, I'm, I'm not even sure I I've don't seen think I've seen one. any of the quiz episodes. Oh, you're, 
we have to do that. We'll have to do, we'll have to arrange something because those are the best ones. Because it's just like he gets the entire staff sitting next to him to help them, and it's like we have to ascertain our areas of expertise. And it's like Arino like draws a line and then an arrow. It's like pornography. <laughs> <laughs> that's great um for so the others are like cars history economics and arenas it's like comics pornography that's uh for those who haven't seen it game center cx is about this guy uh Arino. he uh plays games from his youth and he tries to beat them yeah <laughs> think of those streams that we do yeah basically that. imagine the kingdom hearts 2 stream but Highly, Dan had to play on critical and highly, That's highly edited. Yeah. yeah, highly edited. Highly edited. And next to and next to no help is provided. Yeah, he he's just given kind of figures it out. I don't know about he's that. He's given There's... almost no help. If if he gets if he gets staggered for like hours, they usually give him some. There's a really advice. good moment where an assistant producer for the show comes out. And he's like, here, I figured I would get you back to that point. And he gets back to the point in the game. And then he's like, you can keep playing. And they let him play for like 10 more minutes. And the rest of the staff starts giving him shit. They're like, you're not really beating this game if he keeps playing. Right now. And he's like, do I have to? <laughs> yeah, because uh, the uh, the assistant directors always have to beat the game beforehand to make sure it can be done. <laughs> and it's it's just really funny. Uh it's a really great show. I feel like everyone should check that out. The sequel game uh, follows a plot very similar to the first. For those who don't know, Retro Game Challenge, or Game Center CX, the DS game, as they're known, um, they take place with you being cast back in time by Cyber Demon version of Arino, who challenges yeah. you to beat the games from his youth, and in this game, they're wholly fictional, completely made up. And some of the fucking writing in this is unreal. You got like polygonal face. Like he looks like um, what was the original mascot for PlayStation? Polygon Man in the states. Do you remember that? I name? think that's right. Anyways, what? Yeah, he looks. Yeah, for like one month in America, the final boss from PlayStation All Stars Battle Royale was the mascot. Um, and then Ken Kuduragi got fucking pissed at them. He's what like, what is this thing? <laughs> Yeah, that's that's that's, <laughs> that's the reaction. That's to the correct Man. reaction. Uh, Ken Kuduragi got furious. Feel free to Google Polygon Man, everyone. Um, he got furious. He was like, "Oh my god!" He's he like, posted it." He's like, "The whole fucking point of the PlayStation is that it could do textured polygons. Fucking get no, rid of this. Have poly, just have Andros, but spiky." So they uh they they it's got really wrong. pissed at their marketing people in the states and. They quickly changed the mascot after E3 1995. Um, it's pretty great. Anyways, uh, it looks like Arino in that style, where it's very simple shaded color polygons and not textures. And he's a cyber demon who vexes you. He sends you back to the 80s. He makes you beat games from his childhood, where real life Arino is a boy. And you're friends with him. And he says the fucking funniest shit. He's like, you thought that first challenge was tough? Get ready to unlock your inner gamer. The next one's going to be even harder. And I just fucking... <laughs> That's just you. <laughs> oh, no. Please don't digitize my oh, face as a polygon there's a, Apparently man. there's a third game by a different developer that's bad. Oh, that's unfortunate. What's it on? Uh, 3DS. Okay, well... Maybe someday I'll get to try that one and be disappointed in the first person. But uh, yeah, no, the uh, <sighs> the Game Center CX games, both of them are really good. Um, I highly recommend the first one, which you can buy in the States real easily. Uh, but then again, the last time I looked at the price was a while ago. Let me look this up real quick while I'm saying this. Luckily, okay, luckily, there's, <laughs> luckily, there's lots of easy ways to play, 3D, uh, play DS games nowadays. I'm sure you can think up one. You can think up one or two. Oh, man. Uh, I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't promote any oh. other ways besides uh, plopping down some money at your local store. I cannot believe this shit is so expensive. Holy fuck. Bob, Retro Game Challenge 1 is 60 bucks. Whoa. Okay, I downloaded off the internet. I am fucking elated I bought that game. Guys, let me... Let, I think the sticker is still on it from when I bought it. I think I spent uh, a single digit amount of dollars on it. <laughs> One sec. This is fucking insane. Shit, I don't know where my DS games are. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. 
It's supposed to be oh, no. within arm's reach. Oh well. We're we're rearranging the Gigaboots HQ uh so stuff has been moved a bit. Anyway. Just slightly. Yeah, I paid somewhere between eight and twelve dollars for that back in the day, Bob. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, Before it became an internet sensation, I I figured its full internet sensation tier had been hit by then. Yeah, uh, but yeah, my friend uh, Saraline, who worked on Freedom Planet and uh, also ported the Ease games to PC, um, she was the one who got me into Game Center CX. So I'm eternally grateful for that. She's a cool person. Um, I really enjoyed the Donkey Kong Country 2 episode where Arino is very confident. He's like, I played this when I was younger as opposed to a lot of these games. And it took him like two or three days to beat it. And then his staff said, can you please just stop bullshitting us? (laughs) (laughs) It was like really bad. (laughs) Uh, My favorite Game Center CX thing is like (laughs) the bit where he just lets the demo play and pretends he's playing and everybody's like, oh, Arino's good. And then it cuts to uh, yeah. I'm like it oh cut. no, I was playing. It was the demo. He's like, he's like, like. Uh, it, it, what he, a great guy! <laughs> you hear the staff go, "Wow, he's doing really great." And then, and then it's showing the footage zo- zoomed in, and then it cuts to him, and he looks at the camera, and he's like, "I haven't hit start yet." <laughs> this is really good. Um, what else have I been playing? I played uh, I played Puzzle League for the DS. Ooh, uh, that is Tetris Attack. Hey, Bob. Yeah. What's up? That game is bad. Oh, no. Uh, you would think using a stylus would make it much easier. Yeah. And, yeah. and I suppose to some Double it caps. might. Uh, but no, uh, playing very quickly with the stylus, at least with my 3DS XL, is very difficult. <laughs> that thing's... You have to hold it vertically, firstly. Okay, that's so, already a weird choice. Yes, uh, because the whole play field is vertical and the top screen is going to show your opponent but like it just doesn't feel tight enough and the aesthetic is disgustingly boring i think that they called that the book mode or something because i yeah. remember they, they gave a special name to it because uh they did. Gaiden, dragon sword also dragon did that. sword the, was wasn't that an exclusive or something yeah of course or, or, i wait, mean what else was, could it be on what no i meant uh i meant i may be thinking of the tenchu game Oh, the Tenchu game that was exclusive to GameStop. <laughs> Power to the players. Power to the, the players. On the DS. <laughs> on the DS. It was, Power it was a puzzle players. game. It, wait, it's a, it's a fucking puzzle? Okay, someday I'm going to play that. I still haven't played it. Um, but uh, yeah, I played, I played that po- Planet Puzzle League, and oh man, is that a staggeringly disappointing game. I... The Game Boy Advance one still has the boring as shit aesthetic, but at least it plays good. So it's uh, what what a disappointment! What a fucking disappointment! Um, what else did I play? That's that's it. That's about it over the last week. Um, I've been doing a lot of rearranging Gigaboots HQ, so uh, that's been eating up most up that of my time. Neo Geo. <laughs> I don't own a Neo Geo. Do not listen to Mr. Feel. One day, I will get a Neo Geo uh, because there are a lot of fighting games on it and other stuff, and we need to do testing. Testing is important. Input latency analysis. And uh, the weekly beating episodes that we could make with that would be pretty great. Uh, But no, we don't own a Neo Geo yet. Anyway, we should get to the Podlords. Have you guys thanked the Podlords lately? (laughs) <laughs> Every day of my life, uh, but I can do it again. You're damn right, brother. Yeah, feel free. We're, we should do that again. But before we do that, I tattooed their names on my ass. Jesus, that is some tiny print. Or you're Eric. <laughs> what are you trying to say, Dad? I'm not implying or saying anything the chat doesn't say anytime he turns around in front of a camera. <laughs> that's that's so harsh, but true. Yummy. No, do not say that. <laughs> <laughs> you are disallowed from saying that. <laughs> the pod lords for this episode of the Big Think Dimension are Danny Richardson, Not Gag, E. Lee Broyles, Crimson, Corey Brown, Dank Mormons, Red Blaze 27, 
Jucifer, and Suzo Shiro. Thank you very much to our Pod Lords. Thank you, Pod Lords. Blessed be thy name. <laughs> Thanks, Pod Lords. It's damn Thank right. Thank you, Butt Brands. <laughs> Welcome to my new show, Butt Brands, where we talk about companies that suck ass. <laughs> but the brands! And none of our arms can pork. unfold ever. <laughs> They've been glued together. We're Fucking wearing boomers. We're wearing hug me jackets. It's like power up comics. <laughs> oh, oh, damn, he's good. <laughs> I need to not be thinking about this right now, so we should move on to the news. Hey, Bob, what news. gaming news? <laughs> What gaming news happened? Help. <laughs> See, uh, I, I got one gaming news story here, Dan. I've got a gaming news. <laughs> uh, One Chambara Origin showed off its first trailer. Okay, cool. This game isn't announced for the States yet, but the, the trailer came out. Uh, it has a new, more anime-looking art style to it. Um, mm. And it shows off the new characters, like the, the main character's dad shows up, and he's like this traditional-looking samurai dude, and he looks to be like eight feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> raw. That's pretty great. It is pretty raw. It looks uh, the, the only trauma art games if you haven't played them. They are the the kind of lower budget, more or a little bit pervy action I've, games. But they're like center. I've only heard of good. that first one. Yeah, that's a good mm -hmm. way to describe. Yeah, I I honestly am kind of surprised that uh like whoever owns Center and Cogger hasn't just been like, hey Tamsoft, uh, could you just make one of these with Center and Cogger characters? Yeah, no, they they are like. The last one was really solid. It was probably better than most Dynasty Warriors games. I think I own it, but I've never... You mean Z? The one with zombies? But I've never... They're all, they all zombies. Yeah, they're all... It, I think the first one was like... It, it's based on like a, it? like a borderline pornographic movie, this entire franchise, I think. Uh, I think oh, the movie's cool. based on it. I'm not sure. I've seen the movie. It's not, it's not really that bad. Yeah, it's a real chicken. It's a real chicken and the egg situation. Yeah, it's, I was wondering where the chicken was gonna come in at first. <laughs> Keep uh, fucking that chicken. Yeah, especially with the art style going towards more this, I do wonder if they'll just be like, here's our collaboration. But the last one was called Onichambara Z2 Chaos. That's the one, last one that came stateside, which is the latest, I believe. Mm. They skipped a few between that and the last one they would brought over, which was like a Wii one. Yeah, the last one was uh, Onichambara Bikini Samurai Squad, which was came out in 2009. It was a 360 game. Yeah, there was the 360 one. I wasn't sure which one came out first, that or the Wii one. They were right around the same time. And then they, the Wii one was more recent in Japan, but they both came out mm. roughly around the same time. That was the only one I'd ever heard of was the Samurai Squad one. But yeah, I'm, I'm hoping this gets the stateside release. This, the trailer they showed off was pretty cool. It had uh, a lot of footage from the games and then it intercut with some some pop idol band who also had Ooh. heavy metal music going. It was it was interesting. Is it baby metal? I don't think it was baby metal. I, unless they've grown up a lot since last time I saw them. <laughs> and also, <laughs> they were, there's only like two people in baby metal, and this had like five, so I, I don't think it was them. <laughs> oh. But yeah, that, that's it for uh, my news stories. Oh, uh, okay. Hey, KZ. Hello. What sort that's of me. What sort of uh, gamer got... news do you have for me? All right, so I know you're heavily anticipating uh, Metal Wolf Chaos uh, DX. I think it's what they're calling this version. I'm really glad that you're like James Rolfe and that you say Wolf. <laughs> That's great. Uh, Metal Wolf Chaos finally got its release date. Uh, everyone was like, it's going to be 4th of July. No, no, it'd be funny to do the American, you know, day like July 4th. It's uh, August 6th, I believe. Which people are like, oh, that's kind of like unrelated to anything. And people went, oh, that's the day we bombed Hiroshima. Okay, that, there's <laughs> no way that was intentional for one. I guarantee that. I know it just it slipped. Is quite unintentional, but also well, hilarious. Well, also, it's the, it's, why can't you be positive? It's also the day the Voting Rights Act was signed. <laughs> See, look at that. I just go by See, what people stuff. posted on Twitter. I didn't look into like other days i could find out other important things that happen on august 6th but yeah metal wolf chaos is coming out it's, it's that's, that's good just one month away very excited bob i think it's our role as youtubers to quickly rush out a let's play before the new version comes out uh <laughs> i'm just imagining <laughs> is it that they had like a Metal Wolf Chaos section of that E3 presentation that was entirely revolving around it coming out July 4th, and then it slipped and they were like, fuck! 
fuck! Yeah, just, no, that's right. Just take the right, whole but, thing out, god yeah. damn it! And that's why we didn't see even get mentioned. Yeah. That's likely. <laughs> they should have just had, uh, what's her name again? Nina Struthers. Yeah, they should have had Nina Struthers start the bit, find out it slipped, and just, like, throw a whiskey bottle at somebody. Yeah. You, you can't... Apparently, uh, for those who don't know, um... Danimal can Dan Danimal Cannon from the formerly from the band Arm Cannon, uh, currently solo chip tune musician, does the audio production on those uh, digital Devolver Digital Directs, and uh, oh. he slipped in a very obscure reference to an album of his or someone else did, and that's a uh, hilarious as shit to me that he's like I'm a chip tune artist and I also do sound design for really fucking weird fake E3 conferences. <laughs> it's, is that uh, like a, a canker <laughs> <laughs> yes why do you ask is Nina Struthers <laughs> a kink KZ types into Google no I already know <laughs> yeah I follow Vox on Twitter I a lot of people are really into these conferences yeah I wonder why they're like they keep saying it's the best part of E3 I wonder why you got any other gamer news <laughs> Uh, gamer news, uh, mm -hmm. Cuphead, the delicious last course, which I was reminded of how good a title that is. Mm -hmm. The DLC for Cuphead has been delayed to, uh, 2020. They put out a, they put out like a little teaser showing off like, uh, some gameplay against some of the different, like new enemies. Mm -hmm. Showed the big salt shaker guy. Uh, they said that we're delaying it so we can get it right without doing crunch, which you know, makes sense. That's going to be launching simultaneously on Xbox, PC, and uh, Switch. So that's uh, that's exciting. I'm it's looking a, forward to it. It's a good name, Bob. Delicious last course. I, I get it. Please have a Nintendo boss in it. What? I I don't. I doubt it. I feel I like mean, that's a lot of work feel right? for something that Xbox wouldn't be able to have, or really anything but Nintendo. There's a lot of work. Yeah, I mean... As much as I'd like to see a lavishly animated Nintendo thing. I mean, Shovel Knight had a... Shovel Knight had an entire unique stage for years on the Xbox version. That's not even... That's, you know, that I, is I, less I work. I understand that, but fucking look at Cuphead! Right? Look at it! Yeah, I know, I know, I know. But I feel like Nintendo... I feel like Nintendo would be like, here's a little bit of money for that to occur. Nintendo's like, oops, I dropped six hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, a delay for Cuphead. No, no surprises here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the most on-brand thing ever. Uh, and good. Yeah, it's fine. It, when it we, didn't show up at E3, I assumed. Yeah, I, I didn't even really think about it, but this makes sense. Like when, whenever they give like a a date, and then it's like, oh, the, now feels like the time you'd be telling me. I'm like, oh, it got pushed. Yeah, I I just hate how. In the journalism circle, there's a bit of a, uh, I don't know, whenever a game gets pushed back, people are like, oh, it's really troubled. It's like, no, when it doesn't get pushed back and it looks rough, that's what it's troubled. The fuck are you talking about? Well, I guess it's troubled because all of those annual AAA games come out. <laughs> I just, I think it's, it. we're so far past the era of PS2 when things got pushed back and it turns out they were canceled, but no one wanted to announce it that... It doesn't make sense anymore to be like, oh, and Dead Island Two is still announced. It's still not canceled. That is a very special <laughs> case scenario. Bob, have you seen gameplay gonna, footage I'm of gonna, Dead I'm Island Two? No, dead. exactly. Dead. Look, don't worry. It'll come out because Epic is going to give them fifty million dollars inexplicably for it to be an Epic Store exclusive. <laughs> I am now typing Dead Island Two news into Google. The results. Uh, games radar. I tried to find out what the hell is going on with Dead Island 2 <laughs> and came out even more confused than before. Yeah. They and insist it's still alive this year. Yeah, okay. No, that yeah. came out uh, that came up this year and was like, what are you guys talking about? <laughs> uh May in May, there is an article on IGN titled Dead Island 2 is apparently still alive with the uh the lower line. Uh one of 80 games in development at THQ Nordic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, THQ Nordic is like of course we talked about this. They have they have eight hundred billion things in development. I thought I thought Dead Island Two was going to be Deep Silver. Yeah, I thought that was a Deep Silver thing. Yeah, um, uh, apparently not. Weird. 
Oh, maybe it'll happen. Gonna... If the THQ Nordic got it, I think it's possible that it'll, it'll become real. Yeah, I was going to say de uh, says Deep Publisher Deep Silver. Oh. I feel like Deep Silver would be like, yeah, Epic, we'll, we'll totally put some money behind this game since you gave us this $50 million check. And months later, they would go to cash that check and it would be like, sir, this is for $500,000, not $50 million. Oh, Deep Silver is owned by THQ Nordic. When did uh, yeah. that happen? What? Okay, I'm scrolling down. Yeah, that happened uh, last year. Yeah, they have a financial slide for THQ Nordic that just lists Dead Island 2, Shenmue 3, Wasteland 3. Does that, does that oh, mean no. to some THQ extent? THQ Nordic is evil. Yeah, I was like, did they... Did they <laughs> Do they own the rights to Mighty Number no. Nine now? How does this work? <laughs> oh no! No, see, it's it's called Justice because Deep Silver bought what was less less left of THQ, and then they like pulled free and became THQ Nordic, and then they bought Deep Silver. <laughs> it's like the snake eating its tail. Dead Island Two is gonna come out. <sighs> spoiler cast it's, on it. Mm, no, no, no. Not another <laughs> zombie thing. No. Uh, you're you're no. like, no, no. Pick something that isn't zombie related, Casey. I've, I've, I've established the bar. Pick something that won't. It will be exactly like Days Gone. It'll be 50 hours long. <laughs> it'll be. No it'll way. run terribly. No way. They have. They have. It'll be content. boring as Look, shit. Look, I already True. established the bar. The bar is Casey has to platinum it. <laughs> One. <laughs> One, we're not doing bit spoiler cast based on me platinuming it. And also, mm. yeah, I've never I I will at least have to play it more than days gone. I just checked uh Dead Island on how long to beat is twenty seven and a half hours, which says to me it's prob the sequel would probably be longer. It's gotta be bigger and better. No, that's not true at all. But alright, we're not doing it. De you ready De for the next news? Yes. We're falling into a hole. Go. Yeah, go. Uh, Bandai Namco announced Blue Protocol, an MMO action combat based game. It's coming out for PC using Unreal Engine 4. It kind of looks like like what what if they originally planned on making a Tales MMO and then like pivoted because it's anime style action. Yeah, RPG. it definitely looks like that. Big green plains, cool little city areas. Combat looks. I wonder if okay. this isn't a little bit like like. Let's let's make assets that we can slip into our the Tales games going forward and just like use these. Yeah, it looks it kind of looks like what I would have expected Tales to look like when it did the big jump, but Tales ended up looking a little bit um a little bit different. The environments the the environments look pretty much identical to the ones in Tales of Arise, like aesthetically and graphically. With I a name think. like Blue Protocol, I figured this thing was gonna be a fucking literally anything else but mostly a police based thing i don't <laughs> yeah, no I it, it is in, it is in fact what if it what if your next big anime styled action rpg uh, was that it's, it's an mmo and they're doing a a beta from the 26th to the 28th of this month in japan oh and I, japan. i'm like this looks looks all right i'm just not even gonna assume it's coming here i just not even gonna think Japanese about it. Japanese MMO? Safe. Yeah, I mean, we just had freaking Dragon's Dogma MMO is in the service for its ending. What? Yeah, next month. Never, what? never hit the States. Okay, I'm, so I'm really up, I'm really upset. <laughs> hey, anything's possible. Fantasy Star Online 2 somehow did it. <laughs> That's true. Phil Spencer saved the day. Thank you, Phil Spencer. I feel Spencer. like Bamco's the type of company where they're like, yeah, we could probably get this going. <laughs> I mean, they, they did that weird beta for that action three-on-three -three game on PC. Oh, yes. And then they went, Incarnates. Oop, oops. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, thanks for reminding me of something I got to talk to Bob. Uh, we, I, I thought they, you were talking about the fucking Black Clover three-on-three -three shooter game. Oh, God, I forgot that existed. <laughs> oh, that yeah. was the time they did an anime brawler, but actually did something different with it that was terrible. <laughs> Uh, they also did that Wii U game built entirely in Unity. Remember that, Bob? Oh, yeah. Bl Raven something? Black Raven? Blue I don't, Raven? I don't fucking remember the name. <laughs> I they just remember that, um, we did a quick play. <laughs> have you ever think of a bigger downgrade than when they, jump, they jumped off the Naruto Ninja Storm games that are these lavish, big, recreating the anime with the Cyber Connect 2 cut scenes and quick time events, and they do that and they're like, all right, our next one's being made by 
this company that's gonna like make it a MOBA with capture the flag stuff. Oh, and- KZ, you don't know the interesting part of that company. Mm. I'm trying to remember. That company is it is the one offshoot. that made Devil's Third? Yes, of the guys who made Devil's yes. Third. I was struggling oh to remember God. the name, so I just didn't lead with the creators of Devil's Third. Are like, yo, here's our bad Naruto game that's got capture the flag in it. Yeah, I still want to play the full version of that game, but it sounds like there's nothing but multiplayer competitive, and it's like, that's the worst. Yeah, that's it. That's it. It's them trying to chase that type of market. I, like, I watch occasionally, like, anime game YouTubers, and even they're like, (laughs) Yeah. No, that's not what anybody wants. They're like, when's the real Naruto game coming out? It's Dissidia NT. That's all it is. (laughs) It actually plays better than just NG. Also, apparently that game is named that uh, Dan was talking about is called Lost Reavers. Thank you. Uh, I, I've spent this whole time searching back through our quick plays. Oh my god. <laughs> that I game. remember that fucking game like at Nintendo's E3. Like, look at this free game, guys. Oh, hey. I typed. Oh, no thanks. I found it. There we yeah, go. Yeah, touched it. Just gonna put that in the description for this video if anyone <laughs> wants to... Check out what Lost Reavers Oh, I thought you were going to title this Lost Reavers. Oh, no. It doesn't deserve that. (laughs) Big Think Dimension, number 25, Lost Reavers spoiler cast. (laughs) I'm pretty, after the Days Gone spoiler cast and the reception to it, I'm pretty good not talking about spoiler casts for a good long time on this channel. What are you talking about? We did a really good spoiler cast. We did. It was excellent. So Digimon Cyber Sleuth, Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth and Hacker's Memory okay. is coming to the All PC right. so, Switch uh, in a double pack on October 18th. <laughs> so we have um, at Anime Expo, they did a big Digimon panel. It was unveiling both stuff for the anime and the games. First up, Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth and its somewhat sequel, Hacker's Memory, which was a side. It was uh, the same game like was happening at the same time. So you play as a side character that would occasionally run around in the background of other critical cutscenes from the first game. So they had like an interesting approach with that. It even carried over your playtime from the previous game and like certain. Yeah, collectibles. you remember? You remember? I remember you saying you had like a stroke when it was like importing playtime. It. I just saved. They're like, you want to import your save? Cool. I played an hour of it. Would you like to save? Yes. All right. Currently, you have one hundred and twenty-five hours done. <laughs> And I went, no, I don't. <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, those ga- Is this some Rip Van Winkle shit? <laughs> yeah, and it ca- carries over some collectibles that you got from the uh, from the previous game. So they're packing both of them together into double pack and releasing that on PC and Switch in October 18th. And that's good. Those games are fun. I have some problems with... Uh, I didn't get too far in the second one. I have some problems in the first one. But overall, if you're like looking for... like. A, a fun RPG that does have the capturing and training mechanics of like Pokemon, but done in a different way. I'd recommend those. It's also got a really, really good soundtrack from uh, the composer who did Danganronpa. Yeah, Cyber Sleuth is a really good game. Does, does it have the soundtrack from the it has TV? Some real Kino, unironically Kino moments. Look, I it need... does. Uh, what was that, Bob? I just need to know if it had the Steve th- song from the show. It does not. Why even pl- bother? You know, it it, like what? it it should be it should be do have the they sh- it's Bandai Namco. Why do they not have the fucking forty dollar DLC to have anime songs just shoved into the game that are blocked by your PS4? Mysteries. Great question. Yep. Uh, as a follow up to that, um, those games are in the Digimon Story series that are just more traditional RPGs with a you know a focus on like the the story, and they're making. Another one of those that is no longer shackled by the Vita like these were. It's going to be a full on, yeah. full on console entry. We've known that it's been in development, but they kind of reiterated it here. Completely new setting, mixing both the real world and the digital world for that game, and it's going to come out at some point. And uh, I'm, ex- I'm really excited to see them uh, like work on something entirely new and what. The, how I, that I gotta know the, thing is gonna the digital world in these these story games does it look like the one in that movie that's directed by the guy who did the girl who left through time where it's like all solid white and has crazy stuff going on uh there's there's some of that that's some how some areas look yeah okay 
so they are like when you're like when you're going through like the internet and stuff there's a lot of like areas that are like pure white there's some that are like a pure like blue techno blue it you got digital cubes sometimes yeah they, he directed they're very visually they just pleasing import all of that and be like yeah this is uh this is how digimon is <laughs> it looks real clean like it yeah. upscaled real nice as real clean lines and everything was like focused to look real nice i n i never like looked at it and was like this looks cheap there's definitely there's definitely cheapness yeah like the the, like, the sequel was a way for them to like reuse 80% of all the areas in the previous game, which has me excited because they're like making a full new one that also isn't them upscaling Vita assets. And they already have like a really good aesthetic and everything aesthetic. for that for that. Overall, like the character designs are done by the artists from uh who did the Durarara anime and the and also, Devil uh, Survivor games. Yeah, Devil Survivor. He he draws the upside daisy of Oh the god, he he did both of those. That makes sense. <laughs> I saw the Devil Survivor had really derivative looking art for, from Durarara, so I was like, uh, yeah, uh, it's uh, there are Durarara characters in Devil Survivor 2 as DLC. Oh my god. <laughs> that you can you can have them join uh, join your party. They can make their teams and everything. Great. I think that even I think that made it over even to the localized version. But yeah, they confirmed uh Ports of the old games, a new one is being made, uh, but that's uh, that's far away. And uh, to fill the gap is a game that they announced last year, Digimon Survive, which is a strategy RPG game that's uh, in a completely new setting where they're like, this is a this is a different world where just Digimon are these mythological beasts that have always existed, and uh, you're in a game of like survival. You meet other different characters and. You interact with them, and depending on how you interact with uh, your Digimon will, like, determine how it's going to evolve and stuff. And all the sprites just look like like the anime. So it's, like, looking at a bunch of uh, just, it's like, moving around anime characters. And it, like, has a visual style that looks really neat. That got pushed back to next year, because they were still working on polishing it up. But they showed Casey, a good chunk of gameplay. Hmm. You're saying yeah, that, that does look ridiculously good. You're saying that in this new Digimon game, that the monsters <laughs> are not digital. Uh, the, they said that they took a lot of inspiration from the first anime series, and they said, "Well, for this one, this is a world where Digimon and real people have always existed together." And it's they said it's not the digital world, which okay, I'm like, we're I, in the that, 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 okay. I don't think that makes them Digimon anymore, but okay. Uh, but whatever. Uh, the next thing you're gonna fucking say is that they aren't the champions. I'm just gonna fucking <laughs> leave this podcast right goddamn now. Yeah, they needed to save and defend the world. <laughs> Deke. <laughs> oh, that's the, at the end of the episode. <laughs> you skipped ahead of it. <laughs> yeah, I, I skipped ahead of it. That theme song is so bad and great at the same time. The movie had Smash Mouth. That's where All Star really took off. Yeah, oh definitely God. where it took off. You got that. I'm pretty sure that took off with Mystery Men. <laughs> pretty sure. <laughs> pretty sure Mystery <laughs> Men is where that song took off. Is, is that is that a, is that something we're gonna do a podcast about? <laughs> At some point, Mystery Men is Kino. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I always again. I once again mystical mystery meant for Master of Disguise. No! Oh! Master of Disguise is one of the things I'd give a negative five. <laughs> I, I, everything, oh my God. everything I've Don't ever you heard think about. you being a little mean? Everything I've ever heard about it Let's makes look, me think I would no. too. <laughs> no! My mother took <laughs> me and my younger <laughs> sister to the worst, shittiest, most unbelievable bad movies. I made her take me to go see Warriors of Virtue. I don't even know what that the is. The only movie she ever brings up, like, fuck that fucking movie. I can't believe I took you kids to see that, is Master of Disguise. You know, my, my, my mother, mother walked out during the, uh, the film Daddy Daycare with Eddie Murphy. My mother could never complain to me about taking me to a movie. It always goes the other direction. Mm-hmm. When you're responsible for dragging someone into Malibu's Most Wanted, you don't That's get to sit movie. there 
and accused. Shut up, other- Jason. Yeah, shut the fuck I've watched up. it like twenty five times. <laughs> He's making this really up. He didn't we're gonna we're gonna do a podcast about it. KZ, if you watched it that many times, can I at least give you the benefit of a doubt and say it was image training? <laughs> that you were just trying to be like, this is who you should attack. <laughs> I saw I've seen uh the new kid like 40 times because it was one of the movies my younger sister got obsessed with. I'm lucky I know. Another movie in that category is uh Eight Crazy Nights, the animated Adam uh, Sandler movie. We gotta, do, we gotta, we gotta do that for the holidays. Okay, time. I'm tired of the, the, no more saying we need to do in this podcast. <laughs> no, Dan's just, like, no. Dan's just like, stop saying we need to harm ourselves. Stop saying we Quit need it. to do shit of things I don't fucking like or want. <laughs> so that's all of the news that I had. So, so feel. So, uh, River City Girls has an announcement trailer. Yeah. Uh, it launches September 5th for PS, for, for everything. Okay. Uh, you play as Kyoko and Misako, who are the playable characters from, uh, Kunio Tachi no Banka, which is an SNES game. It has a fan translation if you're interested in that. Oh, cool. Uh, and they have to save Kunio and Riki from their kidnappers. It's $30. Made by Way Forward looks gorgeous. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it's got a really uh, good theme song. <laughs> it has yeah, it a Christina does. V theme song because uh, Way Forward likes that. I hope this game has very good DLC. I uh, already I'm, anticipate the DLC yeah, plan. Already needs the that delicious last course. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, that that trailer does look really good. That game looks super solid. Uh. It's always nice uh, when somebody uh, went through and is like they basically used the same combo from the SNES game they were playable in, like jazzed up a bunch. But it, you can clearly see how that was the starting point. And then they were uh, they showed like the one of the girl enemies that's getting wailed on does the exact River City ransom like horrified expressions as they're getting pummeled. It's always nice when a uh, way forward does some sort of singing in their games because it sounds professionally produced since uh, Vert is involved and it doesn't sound like Bloodstained where they don't have any sort of uh, sound team who's going to put in time to make the English voice actress singing sound good. Look, they couldn't afford Christina Fee. Does Bloodstained have a vocal song? It does. I heard that. I heard that recently and went, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah I, I believe people have uh, phrased it as some real 90s anime aesthetic to the singing. I don't know if any of the 90s animes I've seen have uh, been that bad. No, no, you're, insul- you're insulting things. No, it's it's some real Lunar singing. N- again, no, you're insulting that. <laughs> Look, I love how Lunar sounds, but at the end of the day, you gotta go, no one with any audio engineering degree touched that fucking music. That vocal I'm just track- saying that the singing re- in Bloodstained is bad, but I actually like the singing in that Lunar song. What if, and check this out, hmm. that's nostalgia. How um, does it compare to the um, Margaret Moonlight song from No More Heroes 2? Uh, I didn't play No More Heroes 2, so I really can't say, but, uh, yeah, the the, the problem with Bloodstain is that, um, they, they, they didn't get someone who's maybe the most trained in singing, and they definitely did not touch up the vocals the way you expect, uh, any professionally produced album to sound, whereas Way Forward is really good about that, like, uh, their Double Dragon Neon situation with Vert, uh, the music and that sounded fucking spot on, um, and, uh, you know, same thing here. Sounded really good. Yeah, this thing's actually really close, isn't it? I think it's... Yeah, big, yeah. Yeah, September it's, 5th. It's, yeah. yeah. It's, it's crazy. Months. Yeah, it's in. It's two months out. It's great. Yeah, Way Forward had some cool stuff. I, I'm really happy for this, uh, this new paradigm where people shut the fuck up about games until they're almost done. Yeah, the Japanese method of doing that is pretty pleasant. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, we wouldn't have known about this at all until just now, unless that leak happened. Like, we only found out this through leaks before, didn't we? Yeah, because it was a, a foreign ratings board. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm sure they would have dumped the trailer when they did anyway. Right. Um. But uh, here's here's the thing, though. The reason we aren't hearing more about games that are far out is because those games are in development for the PS5. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the real games are coming out when but real we games should, uh, come out. 
You mean next we year? Keep, we should keep this pattern going mm -hmm. where they you don't say anything until it's less than a year away. So what you're saying is the new thing everyone should try out is shutting the fuck up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be neat. Nah, that sounds boring. Oh, okay. <laughs> you need a really impressive conference. <laughs> I, I announced uh, Phantom Dust. That'll impress them. Oh, God. <laughs> God. Announced <laughs> Phantom Dust after we made the decision internally to cancel it. Phantom Dust as made by Platinum Games. Visionary, visionary oh, creative no. director Hideki Kamiya. Uh, we we didn't we 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 never talked about this. We never talked about this. It, ha it happened a couple weeks ago. But Phil Spencer's like, uh, we're gonna try to acquire some Japanese companies, and I'm like, you mean that. It's now even more transparent. You were trying to fuck Platinum to put them in a position where you could buy them. You just completely ripping away any veil of deniability you had on that. Cool. I, I mean, they only said that just now. They did the Platinum thing a while back. I, I believe the exact phrasing yeah, is... Yeah, KZ, it's not... They literally did the exact same thing to Obsidian, and now they own them. Mm, I don't know about that. I think you're being a little crazy. No, but. this is explicitly a way big publishers acquire studios. Hmm. But uh, yeah, no, I believe the uh, more pleasant phrasing was, "We would love to own a Japanese studio." We would love to own a slave. <laughs> <laughs> I've always, I've always wanted to. It's always I'm that. Phil Spencer. <laughs> I'm Phil Spencer. It's always intrigued me to see a person and know that I control them. <laughs> You know, these I, podcasts are really nice and wholesome and then feel busts out. Phil Spencer owns slaves. <laughs> <laughs> I no. didn't say he owns slaves. I said in my in my perception of him is that he would enjoy the experience on an intellectual level. <laughs> so uh <laughs> Lady Layton, aka Layton's Mystery Journey, uh -huh. Patriel and the Millionaire's Conspiracy, uh is getting ported to Switch. It's already out on in Japan. It was out like last year, but it's getting localized. Uh, it's a port of the 3DS mobile game. It stars... She has a tiny Her hat. Herschel Layton's daughter, who fucked that rectangle man. <laughs> who was like, this dude's shaped like a rectangle and has beady little eyes. I gotta get it. Alright. She has a talking dog. Uh, I've played most of these games and I've never been disappointed, so sure, I'll play this. Oh, cool. I, I still haven't tried any, but uh, I actually... I'm looking into doing that in the next Do you want to months. look at nice art and hear relaxing music and solve puzzles? That's the whole game. Mm. I played the first one. I played the first one and watched one of the uh, one of the movies they did, and that was yeah, also I haven't watched very the good. Movies. They're actually, you know, real movies? Yeah, uh, level... It's, I mean, they're, it's level five, and level five does that thing where it's like, let's make our tie-in stuff good. Where it was like, I watched this and went, yeah, this is like you like, couldn't tell that it was from a video game. It was just, here's an animated film. You know, this actually reminded me of something else I didn't quite get working. Um, it's going to take some more effort to get it to actually work out. But, uh, Bob, they had a DS game for Case Closed. Oh, yeah? But weirdly enough, it was a Case Closed Kindaichi crossover. Like, yeah, uh, Kindaichi Case Files. Have you ever? Yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. The name, uh, the name is familiar to me. So they have that, but they never brought it over to the States. Someone made a translation and it took them for fucking ever to do because of all the writing. Um, I haven't gotten that translation patch to apply correctly, but uh, that's something else I hope to check out sometime soon. Because for people who don't know, which is probably a lot of you, I'm a huge Case Close fan. I own all of it that came to the States. Or Metante Conan. I, I enjoyed that when it was on uh, Adult Swim. Yeah. And they were doing that that run of the dub. Yeah. And then a few years ago, I watched like a two-parter of some of the more recent stuff and went, yeah, this is still real good. Yeah. He's still he's still dealing with some stuff. It seems. He's still a child. It's only been less than a year. Somehow. I think he has like the ability to transform into his adult form more often now. Uh, they, like a, there's, they like find ways, but it never it never sticks. Yeah, it's complicated. I last Thanksgiving. Uh, it's uh, it's the series that has the best figure I've ever seen. Oh, you're talking about the Nendroid of the Suspect. Uh, it's a full size figure too. Yeah. Oh, so it's like the Figma su Suspect. <laughs> yeah. No, that thing's incredible. Where it's just like in case like there's closed, some plot a bad development guy. thing to case closed at some point in the last year or so that was. Uh, they sizable. they like we found out the who the 
like big bad guy is and it let's not talk about that no more yeah yeah we're not going to talk about it anyways so uh shunmu 3 talk <laughs> so epic has come out and said uh if you if you want to because this wasn't going to go away and they were going to get their asshole busted open in the european union if they didn't do something like this so they're just like if you backed it if you backed shinmu 3 and you're mad that you can't get it on steam we'll just give you a fucking refund and then they said uh we'll we'll be we'll be offering refunds for any crowdfunded games we get as exclusives after the campaign, to which I say you shouldn't fucking be doing that, Tim Sweeney. You should. Th this should be a thing that you cease. So does uh, they're not does, going to? Does Tim Sweeney have slaves feel? Well, yes, we know <laughs> we, about that the crunch at Epic. <laughs> I was like, we know that is a fact at this point, KZ. Okay, okay. And that this is what's called in the business a layup. <laughs> look, look, guys. They they aren't slaves at Epic Games because they leave the fucking studio rich as fuck. I want to know what percentage of people refund versus redeem, because I'm probably going to go with the refund. Don't you want to wait the year to get the Steam version? I'm going to be real. After that footage, I don't really want to play Shinmu 3. Fair. Once again, yet another uh, obsessive graphics guy. It's about the game. About the game that won't be done because he has 18 additional parts planned that will never exist. Uh, I mean, the game will be done. Fucking, was Shenmue 1 not done because the story was still going? So... Oh, off topic real quick what percentage of that 25 million dollars because that's how much we're talking with the epic exclusives feel i think that you forgot about a certain factor in this they said that if it's content if your backer reward is high enough that it's content they actually actually make for the game already you can't get a refund so, the, so that those, means like physical stuff if you got physical rewards no no not not physical rewards like in-game things like your character or I forget what they sold, but they sold. Stuff. Oh, so if so if so if you sold like if you got to be an NPC or something, right? If you did the thousand dollar something, that tier. makes sense. That makes sense. But like if you just back to get a digital copy, it's for that. Yeah, and I imagine those people aren't going to be seeking refunds if they paid enough to get something of them inside uh, the game. Have you heard of Mighty Number no. Nine? KZ, I went to the Kickstarter forum when I saw this. I went to the Kickstarter page for this. That whole thing is people who paid way more than they should have and all want it back. Yeah, the people who paid a lot are the first people to turn on you. Yeah. Okay, yeah, you're right. I forgot this is a Kickstarter. <laughs> right, like every single one Literally of Literally everyone's mad even if it goes well. It's, yeah, it, this thing was pretty tragic. <laughs> I'm like... So as I was saying, uh, what percentage of that epic bonus do you think... Uh, the company, the developer is getting zero. That would be my guess, but I'm wondering if Dan or Bob have a more positive take. The epic bonus? The $25 million epic is giving them for exclusivity. Oh. Like, is Deep Silver just pocketing that entire thing? Hmm. I mean, they did announce a bunch of new Kickstarter goals that they could suddenly reach and other ones they had to cancel. So maybe they're actually getting the money to do this. I my, Personally, I think, like, they were given enough that the game doesn't have to be canceled. Right. And then after that, they get nothing. It kind of just looked like they were making the game. The game was almost done to the degree they were going to do it. They were able to do like one more delay. And the publisher's like, well, we'd like some money. And they're like, fucking whatever. We're able to do this. So we're just going to throw it up there. And the developer's like, this is great. We've this is this is just what we have to deal with. So in less, uh, less, let's, uh, less epic news, let's not talk about epic no more, uh, Harvest Moon Friends of Mineral Town, which is a remake of the PS1 game, Harvest Moon Back to Nature, is being remade for Switch, and due to the, uh, Harvest Moon licensing kerfluffle, it will be titled Story of Seasons Friends in Mineral Town. Okay, I was wondering how this would happen, because when I heard about Harvest Moon Friends of Mineral Town being remade, I was like, oh, that's cool, but... The, the, that, is it being remade by those awful shells of people at Natsume? No, it's being made by the real company, the real developer, and they're, it's, so it'll just be Story of Seasons. Uh, this is apparently one of the better ones, so it'll be the second Harvest Moon game I play. Yeah, the first I, was Harvest Moon 64. I, I like Harvest Moon games, and the, the, I've seen some insane lore that comes out of Harvest Moon games. <laughs> oh, like what? Yeah, there's, there's one of them where that somebody I follow on Twitter has been posting about it. They're like, Here's the Harvest Witch from one of the Game Boy games, or it's a DS game, I forget which. It's like, 
She's kind of the villain, but you can marry her if you give her 10,000 gifts one at a time. You have to also slaughter her, uh, animals. <laughs> yeah, you have to slaughter a bunch of your farm animals. Uh, I, I really like hearing about the dog mascot character who you find out doesn't have anyone in the mascot outfit. And also you can marry him and have a child. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a... Uh, uh? Yeah, it's pretty fucking weird. Uh, but yeah, the PS1 Harvest Moon game is really great. Incredible game. S so incredible, my mom stole it from me. <laughs> she uh, borrowed my Dan's copy. Dan's just going to turn to the side and be like, we, we do the podcast with mutoids. <laughs> no, no, because uh, this is Harvest Moon. I understand not playing it. It's not the biggest game. I haven't, I haven't game. played an Animal Crossing game before. You haven't? I have not. Oh, that's cool. I avoid them because they are virtually MMOs. <laughs> they want your fucking soul, so I won't engage. <laughs> oh. I don't know. every watch, game as now. As you watch Tosh walk into the abyss. Yeah, no, she she fades away. I'm going to give this new one a try, because I'm pretty sure most of the people I know are all getting it. Yeah, it looks exciting. looks really solid. Um, This remake of Harvest Moon, I'm very excited for. I'll probably buy it. Um, hmm. I'll let you guys know how it is. I'm a huge fan of the PS1 one, which is why I'm still bitter. But uh, yeah, no, should be good. Man, this is the first Harvest Moon game that might run right in like such a long time because it's for a Switch and not for the 3DS or the regular DS, and just doesn't have enough power. Like all those Story of Season games run so bad. They're like at the last moment we we, we have decided this is coming out on the PlayStation Portable. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! It's running too well. Playing on my PSP Go, playing it on my I, L. I do wonder if Nintendo is putting up money for this at all, because I don't think they've given us like a. Uh, I think it's only confirmed for Switch right now. Yeah, and I and mean, they're definitely funding the Rune Factory things. Yeah, they're funding those, so it shows that there's a shared interest on that platform. Uh, the Switch is a really huge platform with a pretty high attachment rate. And I'm sure that's only going to get better later this year when the uh, revision, revisions come out. Speaking of which, did you guys hear that that it leaked from a foreign uh, website that you could pre-order cases designed by companies for that Switch that hasn't been announced? Yes, what? I did really? see that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I saw people making like mock-ups based on the case. Yep, it's fucking for hilarious. The, for the new Switch. Uh, that was very funny. People got confused because there was like some shit that just said it was Switch 2. <laughs> <laughs> and people were like, oh no. It's like, that's not what hold it's, on. It's not going to be called Switch 2. <laughs> They're not going to fucking announce the Switch 2 in like two months. <laughs> It'll be the Switch Lite. Right, but at least this will have... The new Switch! No, they learn. I, I hope they don't. I <laughs> no, hope they, they don't. don't. Don't don't give them that much credit, Feel I don't believe they learned until they don't do it for like a decade. Considering when the Switch was announced, it was <laughs> don't like... Don't be reasonable here's, here. the here's the name of the Switch. It's called the Switch. It's this. It's called the Switch. The symbol, the logo has the word Switch in it, and the... The animation has a switching sound. I feel like the Wii U taught them a real serious lesson. Uh, this one's going to be called the doesn't switch because it won't have a dock. <laughs> Maybe it'll have like a weird dock. It'll probably have a cable you hook into it to do HDMI out, but uh, I still I think it'd be believe. fucking unreal if they called it the doesn't switch. Oh my god. I want to believe that the advertise advertising and like how they're going to handle the name of this next like revision of the switch will be great. Because all the advertising, like the commercials and the ads for the Switch, have been great. It's like it's all been, the, <laughs> it's all been not af awful. It would be like if they internalized the ethos of the "I did a 360 and walked away," okay. but as the name of the product. <laughs> I, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna guess it's gonna have hey. a dog. It's just be a small dog. <laughs> Yeah, you won't call it I'm the gonna guess that their acronym will end up being sad like Xbox. God, that's still so stupid. <laughs> the Xbox stupid and dumbasses. The true name of Why are you leaking Xbox? shit, Phil? <laughs> so here's some good news. Remedy has the publishing rights to Alan Wake back. Yeah. Quant 
Quantum Break didn't fail, but it didn't really succeed either, so that means the stage is perfectly set for Alan Wake <laughs> 2. <laughs> oh my god! That's great. No, I'm, no I'm, joke. When, when Quantum Break got announced, I was like, I don't want it to fail, but I don't want it to succeed either. It has to succeed at exactly the amount to not be worth continuing so they can go back to Alan Wake. They, they just need to get the license back to do Max Payne. Wrench that away from Rockstar because they aren't going to make a game. Nah, it's dead. Alan Rockstar Wake's better than Max not, Payne 1 and Rockstar 2. Rockstar is not releasing it. I don't know. Is the deal. Their uh, you don't get to play as the, as the creator of the studio doing John Moo style bullet time. <laughs> That's very cool. Very cool. I haven't even played Alan Wake, but still. <laughs> There is an interview in universe that you can watch on TV in Alan Wake 1. He like turns on the TV in his apartment and watches an interview with uh, the head of Remedy. And the guy goes, make the face! And then he turns to the camera and just makes Max Payne's face. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that sort of thing happens in all of these games, and it's great. It's, it's really great. I feel like they're definitely going to jump on making a new Alan Wake once they finish up on... Are they making Control? They are making control. Yeah. I'm excited for control. Yeah. Me too. That game looks cool. I heard impressions on I mean, like, I'm the sure, demo they did at E3. I'm sure Microsoft Sounds will good. own them next year. Uh, they're doing a multi-plat title right now, so... Yeah, right. Well, I mean, that didn't save Obsidian. I want to believe that Remedy is going to succeed and escape the grasp of Microsoft. Maybe even be bought by <laughs> Sony or something. I mean, to it, be they, fair, what, Sony it, would benefit from having a first-party studio like Remedy. Right. Um, I'm like, that's... So, Sony they, said they're looking into inquiring studios, like, last week. I mean, good, because look at them. Like, they they, they have the been best studios. a lot of them this past gen. Yeah, I feel like they have the best studios in the world, but they shut down half of the people they fucking own this generation. Look, they, they got rid of David Cage. That's yeah. plenty of room for Remedy. <laughs> yeah, yeah that I know. Would be fucking millstone no longer around their neck. Just fucking take out the David Cage and put in the 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 Remedy. You know, it does make me upset that he's going to get to make one more game because of Epic giving him money. But then then it'll be over. <laughs> it's fine. I want to see what horrible thing Epic funds. That's always funny. Because <laughs> then the of people you don't care about money is burning. Instead mm -hmm. of Sony, where it's like, what are you doing? Yeah. I hope it's just, I hope it's just like the worst possible thing. I hope David Cage comes out and is like, in my next game, I will address sexism. And everybody just goes, oh no. <laughs> yeah. That it's, it's okay. It's okay. Check this out. He's going to address sexism, but he's going to do it through a different lens so that we get people get more empathy. So the analog for women in this is going to be goblins. <laughs> goblins. <laughs> That's too creative for Will my choices kids. matter? I don't know, Bob. He turned black people into robots. <laughs> he did! The protagonist will be a dashing, muscular Frenchman named Cavid Dage, whose <laughs> advances <laughs> towards Cavid women are always, are always misinterpreted. He's really not at fault at all. Uh, don't read what any of those news, news articles no. about him says. Oh, no. This is the funny thing is I'm hearing it in, in the uh, f fat guy from Mighty Number no. Nine's voice when you said that. Don't uh, read any of those articles. Whoa. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> um, so this barely this is barely news, but okay. it made me laugh. Uh, Masuda had a big dog at Pokemon Company slash Game Freak. Yeah, this Genichi is technically Masuda. news. It ex pretty much exploded. Yeah, this is he addressed news. he addressed all the complaints about no national Pokedex. He could have saved a bunch of words by just saying "fuck you" because that's basically what he wrote. Yeah. Hey, yeah. I, I quoted the official Pokemon Twitter's thing and just went, Matsuda, no. <laughs> the answer it's is, they're like, all not right, we've, even, we've not heard. Not even like, maybe in the future if people wanted it, it might come back. It's, fuck you, this is the new paradigm. Stuff your Pokemon into home, it's where they live now. I feel like something about his response smacked a little bit of, well, you know, we tried to make people happy with our games, so... Maybe in the future we will do something that will service that kind of... Which it was enough language for me to be like, is he seriously saying that the real Pokemon game comes out next year? Because I'm going to blow my brains out. I can't fucking cope with that. If the next Pokemon game has a National Dex, if 2020's Pokemon game, I will oh, become no. intolerable. 
<laughs> oh no! Yeah. Only then will he be Only then, <laughs> dude. Imagine what the discourse will be by that point. He's already talking about Phil Spencer liking slaves. <laughs> what you see now is me in my base form. <laughs> You're in twenty percent power right now. He's going to evolve. Yeah, he's going to become but, uh, Omega Feel Shenron. <laughs> Oh god, oh god, don't make him a GT, don't make him a GT villain. <laughs> but um, I have the statement up here that Matsuda said, and he's like, thank you to the fans for caring so much about Pokemon. I've read all your comments. No, you haven't. I've read all of them. And he said, we're passionate about Pokemon. After so many years of developing them, it was a difficult decision to do it like this. But even if a specific Pokemon is not available in this game, that doesn't mean it will not appear in future games. And then said, Pokemon is a series that evolves. Buy this game. <laughs> yep. It's the most, it's the, it's, the way I'm reading it is just, they're going to get you used to it. So you can get excited when this, this next game is going to have the, the Wurmple you want. Or like, Grumpig or Vileplume. I don't think National Dex is ever coming back. But those first 150, those guys are in because, you know. Pikachu, always in. Always in. Always wants to go on the vacation. Tangela, probably not. I, I like the, that tweet. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, I'm just, I'm just bringing my, my, my reap to the new gen. And it's like a, a freaking, uh, the the legendaries from Gen Three. The, Rayquaza. The, yeah, Rayquaza in, okay, in a the, the Rayquaza outfit. inside the fucking Wulu. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. That's you know, you know, it'll always be in Wingle. Pelipper. No, uh, no. <laughs> I saw some. I saw some fucking people saying on Twitter that Bidoof should be deleted. Yeah, I, one look. Bidoof. You, you don't. You don't say Bidoof. It's Budoof. It matches the exact elegance of the animal itself. You know, you're <laughs> right because then, it, then I would, then I would have to pronounce the evolved form as B Barrel, and it's B Barrel. <laughs> <laughs> so thank uh, you. <laughs> two. Uh. Bidoof is one of the greatest HM slaves that have ever existed. Uh, yes, we have we have one in the Nuzlocke content that I put out with my friend PM. We've named our uh, Bidoof Brad after Brad Shoemaker. <laughs> you know, Bidoof really deserves better. Um, <laughs> it's been a rough week for Bidoof, evidently. You're a Makuhita. Dan, I'd rather be a Bidoof. Dan is, is... <laughs> Bob was a Piplup. You, I, I uh, worry that pip ups are right. Yeah, pip ups was everybody, what I used. Everybody died because your fates were in the hand of a clown. <laughs> yes, the biggest clown of them all. And I was scared that Badoof's not going to be in this new game, and I'm just getting worried. I don't know if I can uh, buy the game if it doesn't have Badoof. Uh, here's the thing, Bob. <laughs> Being worried, not the correct emotion. Being furious. Now that's the T, sis. <laughs> we're gamers. We got to get mad. Hey, man. People complained about the input lag in Sam's show, and they fixed it. I feel That's like SNK is really cool. They complained about the online in Mario Maker 2 not involving friends, and they're going to fix it. Yeah, this is this kind of thing that the Nintendo needs to hear loud and clear True. from the fan base that that's not okay. That's not what any of us want. And that that then I mean, they might worry about it. This is how bad it is. I'm sitting here and I'm like, will I fucking play? Am I going to get the new Pokemon game? That's fucking weird. The fucking Jim Rackgazer hasn't even bought a Switch. He was going to buy it for the new one. They said there was no National Dex. Now he's not even fucking buying a Switch. Like, this is a huge part of Pokemon to people. It's part of why 3rd Gen was the worst selling generation. Like, it, having it a is, sense of I, continuity I feel bad is for the important. people who are really in, into that in general. I just. Having a sense of continuity and being able to cross them over is half of the fucking appeal. The game is not sold based on the quality of its animations. If it yeah. was, it wouldn't sell. <laughs> so I, I think they, 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 that was a really bold thing to say. Yeah. Yeah, it was something. They, they, it's like, why would you say that? You didn't. Did, you like say the, it while there's a wingle on the screen, <laughs> T-posing. It's not even can you, can, can you see? Do you have fucking eyes? It's really impressive you've been able to develop this game with flippers for hands, you subhuman. <laughs> Matsuda's like, I'm, I'm writing, I'm putting down code with my boxing gloves. <laughs> the same implements David Cage uses to write his games. A I ham mean, in a I, boxing glove. Even if this game doesn't do as well, I'm, I'm, I think it's going to take a lot for Game Freak to 
change because what what i am perceiving this whole issue to be as game freak wants to have the exact same profit margins for a switch game as they had for a 3ds game and they refuse to expand which is to make to shrink that it's really bizarre because honestly i think their appeal with this game is stronger than it's ever been before there are some people who want a, a console quality pokemon game like they need that they want that so this is the most excited I've been for a Pokemon game in a long time because everything about it, the main thing looks great. The new designs I really like. And Sun and it's Moon on a sold console. so much because it was like, here's our this. It was a it was a real 3D Pokemon game where everybody wasn't a midget like they were in X and Y and the and it's Gen like 3 actual remake. 3D. It look, it, mm -hmm. Even on the 3DS, those models look fucking great. The characters all look like the artist's art. Yeah. And, and they were doing some interesting stuff with it. They pushed the story even harder than they have before. Yeah. Yes, a lot by of cool having a, a gigantic t t tutorial that people got upset by. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, that, that, was, that was me. And the like 45 minutes it takes you to get to credits after you beat that league. It's uh, I I yeah I seriously, I don't know. Yeah, it's weird because it's on such a. They haven't even shown like, that many Pokemon in this new one. Uh, yeah, they have. They've shown yeah, a bunch of old a... Pokemon, which makes yeah, this even there's... fucking more insane. Yeah, they've shown us like six. They've shown us like six Pokemon so far, or something like that. If there's not, if there's, if there's not at least a hundred new ones, they're they're gonna come off real fucking bad. Nah, let me list some of the new Pokemon. You got Wingle. You got Machamp. You got fucking... What was the other one? They kept showing old Pokemon, and then this news came out that... You, well, you're not going to be able God, to bring Wingle over God, Wingle sucks Pokemon. so much. I fucking... I'm Wingle fine with, is raw. I'm fine with R Wingle. I still don't like its evolution, Look, Pelipper, like, but fucking come on. Pokemon have a lot of archetypes, and sometimes the what you get is good, and sometimes it sucks ass. And Wingle is one of the ones that sucks. Uh, he's really great. Uh, Pelipper's got a big mouth. But growing up next to the beach, seagulls and pelicans are really cool. Wingle's really cool. Pelipper is an idiot. <laughs> yeah, that's how it works. It's a science. <laughs> yes, that's why I like him. He looks like a fucking dope. <laughs> I mean, he's useful in third gen when you when you beat up your dad and you send out your Wingle that has uh, protect. You just use it when the slacking acts. Yeah, and it never uh, damages you. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. That also that also works. But I'm hoping that they have more Pokemon. In this sword and shield that are of the level of that bird, uh, Corviknight, because that that is a good ass. Corviknight is a good fucking Pokemon. It's probably the best bird looking one since uh, the new Pokemon Braviary. Pokemon game where we get twenty new Pokemon. Yeah, see, I was actually right. just thinking about that. This is gonna have the least new Pokemon of any Pokemon game ever. No way, it has to have more than than X and Y. How many are in X and Y? Uh, let me check. I think even that guy is like fifty or so. Yeah, do we have like a do we have a graph of like I think we have seventy. What's the lowest performing amount of new Pokemon? No no no. I'm talking we're talking how many new Pokemon There was uh sixty nine new Pokemon in yep. X and Y. Yeah, I think it's gonna be less than sixty nine. That would be fucking on that would be disastrous for PR. Yeah, that's there what I'm imagining is like gonna 80. occur. <laughs> right. Like I, I think that's gonna happen. I don't I think they're gonna keep just not talking that about means it. You're, that means you you're saying that the starters will be twenty percent of the new Pokemon. Uh no, I think this well yeah a little bit less than that. I think the starters are gonna be let me just say it this way. I think there are gonna be about fifty new Pokemon if we're lucky and there are going to be two hundred and twenty in the game. So three out of every four Two. Pokemon you see is going to be an old ass Pokemon. Okay, let's go around. We all have to call it now. How many new Pokemon there will be, and how many will be in the game? We have to do it now because Dan did it. Yep. Sure. KZ. <laughs> Fifty-seven. And how many do you think will be in the game total? How big will the decks be? The decks. Ah, uh, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> fuck. Fuck. Need the numbers here. Okay, all right, I'm redoing my shit thinking about it. Now, new Pokemon. There might still be a chance of regional variants. <laughs> I hold on to that dream. I'm going to say that they will add 88 new Pokemon. The Pokedex, the Pokedex will be 155. Whoa, that's really low <laughs> but for the second part. But yeah, okay. So, Bob, what's yours? I think 
I honestly was going to go for 50, but I'll go ahead and go a little below just so we're not on the same. I'll, I'll say 45. You could, say, you could say 50 as well. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, 50 seems like that's what I, I really expect. Um, and then I think I'm, I mean, a little I'm always wrong on these, so it doesn't matter too much. I'm a little more positive on the other thing. I think they're going to have 350 uh, total Pokemon. Is that positivity when you just said one out of every seven Pokemon I see is going to be new? No, it's not actually that's, positive. That's not. <laughs> oh, but, no. But, you so, know, that, that's good. I have a special thing pulled up for when we have all of our submitted now that I have it. <laughs> I have regrets. What about you, Feel? Uh, I'm going to say there will be 70 new Pokemon and the decks will be around 350 in size. Yeah, so, so one in five, one in five will be new. Yeah, this is, I don't like this. That, that, that sounds awful. It, I have to wonder if this thing's like, it seems crazy that they're, they're doing this sort of thing. Like that we're all, or we're worried about not having that many new Pokemon and stuff. It's like, this is the best Pokemon's ever been doing. What are you guys doing? What's going on, Pokemon Company? It, You're making millions has with to just Pokemon be, Go. It has yeah. to just be like, we don't want to expand our team from how big it was when we were making 3DS games. No game is like this. No game is like, no, we're not expanding. Not at all. I mean, they sometimes c companies have done this before and they've gotten their shit slapped, which like uh, eight or nine years ago when Bamco was like, uh, we're not localizing in as many games anymore because we don't have the staff to localize them. And everybody in the world said, then you should hire some more staff, idiots. And then they <laughs> did, and then we started getting their games again. Yeah, it's... Because, uh, like... Uh, did, did Dan give his guess? Yeah, so he, we, he said we, there will be... We started on mine. <laughs> yeah, he said, he said there's going to be, what, 220, you said? Yeah, 220 be? total, uh, 50 new. So. All right, That's so... Dire. So I pulled up the generation list just now for uh -huh. all the gens. Mm -hmm. The... The lowest amount of new Pokemon in any game mm -hmm. was uh, X and Y's gen, yep. 72. Yep. Uh, and its dex, of course, was up to 721. Uh huh. Uh, the lowest Pokedex ever is just gen 1 with 151. And it <laughs> last gen, Sun and Moon, had 88 new Pokemon. And so far, we've seen 12 for this gen. So they, uh,. <laughs> It'd the be nice if they hit 89. <laughs> Even 88 felt really low, like playing that game. The regional well, yeah. Pokedexes are usually around 300, so 350 still seems pretty safe to me. Yeah, as soon as I saw this, I went out and I, I went way too low. I, uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm excited for that new Pokemon game. Let's, that's uh, good. That's I play the main game and stop, so I'm very excited. Yeah, that's also what I do. Game. So, uh, so this doesn't even apply to me. I wish it looked. I wish the animations looked a little bit nicer, but that's about it. Uh, that win goal, though. Shantae Five has an animated intro by Trigger. You can go watch it now. Uh, there's already conspiracy theories because there's a shot of it where her window just looks exactly like the Smash logo, and I kind of <laughs> bought it. I kind of bought into that theory a little bit because I'm like. <laughs> Trigger could really easily just also do the Smash trailer while they're doing the Shantae intro, and then that just drops like in fall or whatever because the Joker one was animated. I mean, that would be amazing. I could not believe that it fucking. I saw the trailer right as it popped up on. Oh, like, and that Twitter. was specifically the screenshot that the uh, way forward Twitter used. I think. Oh my god! Immediately in the replies, just people posting. I'm like, oh god! I have oh, to. God. I have to check and see. I. I, that trailer is really good. Way forward and uh, trigger. It's amazing. I, they yeah, they basically just be doing like, another yes. another vocal track. It was good. I I want to see what this game looks like. We haven't seen gameplay, but now we've seen the intro. They showed a few seconds of it at like I think it was an Apple event. Did they? What? Like, yeah, I was looking at a thread on like I think it was Reset Era about Shante. Someone going, we haven't seen any of it, and then they pulled out some old tweet. From like I guess the uh, when Apple did their big gaming service thing, Apple mm -hmm. Arcade, and they just show four seconds of like Shantae yeah, running they, around. It looks like the half genie hero visuals. Yeah, it actually looks a little bit more refined, even. Yeah, like it's you know iterating on that. I mean, half genie hero is really good. I'm 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 super excited. Them them actually paying for an intro is amazing. I like yeah. that. It, it was a it was a really cool uh cool intro. Triggers doing indivisible intro this year too. 
man, it, we've seen previews it, it, that it'd be really good. great if uh, if they 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 could be confident paying for that intro because they're going to get so much free uh, publicity when she's in Smash. <laughs> Sakurai is a slave. God, Chante, no, be really no, good. KZ, you can't be a slave if you're willing. Look, KZ, he only has to make five characters for a whole year. That's way better than. What, 50-something? I, I think at the Leading point where the he's like, game? yes, I collapsed and went to the hospital. The nurses had to keep me from ripping out my IVs and going to work more. <laughs> yeah. So Dragon Quest X, right? Uh, Dragon Quest X, it's an MMO. Uh, they removed the IP ban blocking U.S. connections. A lot of Japanese online games have this. Keep out filthy gaijin, basically. Uh... PSO2 has this, so if you wanted they to do. play it, yeah, you have to do bullshit to get around it. Uh, I guess I did do bullshit. I did. I had to do a lot to register on that site yeah, and read Japanese emails and click some links. You have to do bullshit to get around it. So, this with the fact that um, they made a lot of the tool tips and tutorial tips, they added English text for them. This is just feeding back into more into the like, they're gonna fucking localize this. This is the an, another phase of their big there will ne the if it's going to happen there will never be a better time yeah between smash the the big switch port for 11 it's like this is their big shot to maybe get this series established i could really easily see like when when hero is about to come out when they do that direct it's like we'll we'll talk about hero and all his moves but first here's eight tq games coming out on switch like, I could see them doing an entire DQ Direct when he's about to come out, because just, like, put put it, stuff it into their brains while we have time. They'll, they'll buy one. That's all we need. Hero could be dropped at any time, anywhere. He is supposed to be he's out this summer, isn't he? Yeah, he yeah they said soon. summer. We're in, we're, in, we're in summer, so either, either, either it's real summer or it's Sakurai summer. <laughs> I think it's probably going to be, like, it's the end of August. Like when they did Smash 3DS, where they're like, summer, it's not summer anymore. <laughs> uh, so uh, CyberConnect2 did a panel at uh, Anime Expo, which is the weekend that we're recording this. And they uh, they revealed the new, uh, they revealed more about the upcoming game. It's part of their uh, Little, little Tail Bronx. Of... Oh, okay. It's part of the Little Tail Bronx series, which was uh, Tail Concerto on the PS1 and solato robo on the ds uh this is the new one in that it is a bunch of furries in a tank oh and it's going to have a. It, it's going to have like a very dense like depressing war type story because it's like ev all the characters they've shown are like obviously young and so this is obviously going to be like a gundam situation where these kids are piloting a giant tank so wait is this their anti creates game where everything's way more hardcore than that style would let on uh, no, it's just like, I mean, I, CyberConnect2 is kind of a better developer than NT Creates a little bit. Yeah, no way. <laughs> uh, I feel like it's more of a Days of Ruin situation, Bob. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, it's more like Days of Ruin. Yeah. Are they still doing they that, that revenge they, trillogy thing where they, they said they announced like three different games that were a part of some, uh, something? This is one of them. Okay. Like the, the themes are at the top when they announced it. it's War Cross Vengeance Cross Kimono. Which is the term, <laughs> Japanese term for uh, yeah. furry. And it says an action strategy RPG depicting hope and despair. Kimono? So, K E, it's E. Oh, not kimono. A. Okay. I yeah, like, I took a second to. Excuse too, me? <laughs> they put it's their, like, um. They put their yeah. suits on. Put on your suit, you furry. <laughs> Sit the fuck down. But yeah, it's explicitly children. They're fighting like, you know. The genera, the 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 Germa Russia Empire. They have a big old tank. Did they show gameplay? Uh yes. Cool. It looked it looks very like Advance Wars. -ish. Did they show platforms? Yeah. Did they announce what platform I, this is coming out on? I don't think so. I would assume it would be everything. Oh okay. Um, maybe maybe I can't. Maybe I haven't found it. I was actually before. hoping to play Solo to Robo and uh, Tail Concerto sometime. Uh. I have yet been able to do that, but I know a guy. <laughs> uh, it's now titled uh, Fuga Melodies of Steel, and it's going to launch on everything. Ah, PS4, nice. PS4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, PC. Wow, that's the most exposure the series has ever gotten. Thank God. <laughs> yeah, 
yeah, it's not a late life portable title. Yeah, late life PS One game or DS game. It was like in the last year of the oh, DS man, that they released dark. Solo Toto Robo. This game oh, apparently yeah. it's going to have a hard fail state, and you start over in like a new game plus mode if that happens. So you can like hard fail. Uh, there's permadeath. There's permadeath for the party members. Uh, apparently the tank has a super weapon that requires one of the 11 characters to sacrifice themselves. Whoa. Okay, that's... That's a bit fucking grimdark. Jesus Christ. This is probably going to be pretty good. I hope so. I think CyberConnect 2's games are fine. It has like, um... It has like the vanillaware type thing where you run around inside the tank and talk to people. They showed that. Uh, they showed where you can assign people on the tank because it's just all tank combat. I don't think there's any other stuff to it. Guy who says Dragon Ball Z Burst uh, showed, Limit is good says CyberConnect makes games that are fine. They showed a little bit of gameplay. Uh, okay. It, I, it seems... <laughs> first of all, why you always gotta go for the throat? I'm an innocent lad who didn't do nothing. Dragon Ball Z Burst Limit is at least an 8 out of 10. You ch one, one, you're one, you're a fucking lunatic. Two, you tagged me in a Dragon Ball Z related curious cat, a crime punishable by death in Florida. I did not know that it would be so. I was not aware that I was yeah. trying to slight you. It was just a funny haha -ha bit, and you tried to punish me for no good reason. I gotta say, furries are getting a lot of power right now. <laughs> no, I tried you to got silence the storm. I tried to silence the storm of the fucking mentions off of that fucking curious cat. And then instead of muting the conversation, Twitter muted you. And it took me a half a day for it to unmute you. Yeah, don't mute me. I'm an innocent lad who didn't do nothing. Except to to elaborate on my Cyber Connect 2 take before... <laughs> Be no, before, before, before you that. slander me further, what? <laughs> what? We, we gotta talk about how they can go to patreon.com <laughs> and get as close to that goal to watch those Dragon Ball Z movies. Oh yeah, if we movies. get to... If right, we get to feel, do, that, do the Patreon if, bit. <laughs> you can go to our Patreon at patreon.com slash gbpodcasts. We have a goal. If we reach $2,000, we will produce a monthly exclusive show where we watch each Dragon Ball movie and special and form perform form def, a definitive list of their quality, thereby upsetting across our four opinions. We will upset every single person on the internet, a including and especially Hail Zeon from HailZeon.com on YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, literally, yes, absolutely. We're gonna anyway, finish watching on the any movie, and then okay. KZ's gonna go. That was Ron. We're gonna go. KZ, tell us what you liked about it. He's he's gonna be like. They were strong. <laughs> they played Pantera when Brawly was fighting. No, what's going to happen is I'm going to give my answer, and then Dan's going to pretend I didn't say words. <laughs> I mean. So, so to, uh, to elaborate on my CyberConnect 2 take, I think they make really cool anime-related games, but uh, I also went through the entirety of the .hack GU uh, remasters, and I only thought they were just okay. I had like had a lot of issues with um, presentation, pacing, yeah, the uh, amount of like new stuff to the game as you go through all what what ended up being four games because they actually made another one which was much shorter, but they added a fourth volume to that with the remasters. And I had a lot of issues with some of that and some of the the writing and story stuff. And that's why I went there just that's fair. fine. But when they're adapting like anime style games it looks like they really that plays more to their strengths so they have a lot less of their own chops to go on there and that's not even to say they're bad they're just fine unlike dot hack which is not anime that's real so this uh this isn't video game news but it is related to what we just it is about. it's real life hey <laughs> you go into a video game yeah have you heard of kite we I, know what uh triggers next series is <laughs> His feel tries to escape. We know what Studio Trigger's next series is. It's a cyberpunk uh, furry series written by uh, the Gurren Lagan and Kill the Kill and Promare writer. It's called uh, Brand New Animal. Did we turn it yes. into a video? An anime podcast? Yeah, just now. What happened? <laughs> Look, we talked really about Trigger and <laughs> Fuma and I want a uh, Fuga and I wanted to do a bit, so I had to bring it up. Speaking of anime, One Piece is pretty good. I've yeah, heard. Uh, 
Pirate Warriors 4 is coming <laughs> out. Uh, Pirate War. I didn't at read this, One Piece. I preferred Bleach. At this point, Pirate no. Warriors is the, is the main Dynasty Warriors series. All the big advancements. I thought the main Dynasty Warriors was the, the Hyrule Warriors. It has the most money put into it. It's 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 the main series now. With good reason. I hope that one is an open world. I just I hope they dub this one. That would be great because they have a great voice no, cast and animation for there one is piece. Way too many characters. They will never do it. There's like eighty. Yeah, unfortunately, that really, for me at least, ruins the Dynasty Warriors. Yeah. Bamco still publishes those, right? Yeah. I don't think they ever. Do, they hardly ever do dubs. Yeah, it's frustrating for, for the for the for the, for the license. Yeah, even games. Jump Force isn't dubbed, is it? No. No. Nope. It's insane. Kill a Kill is getting a dub, and that's obviously that was not shocking. That. Yeah, like right? they didn't overview like an overview trailer for that game that was just narrated by Mako. Nice. Like it was Pirate good. Warriors Three has thirty-seven playable characters. You know, I that need to give out like a couple lines. <laughs> Well, uh, no, it also has a pretty ex ex uh, extensive story mode. Like, it has, um... I played the first one a good bit. Like, Hyrule Warriors got away with that shit because nobody actually spoke except the narrator. They spoke in, like, almost Banjo-esque things. <laughs> but yeah, that's all. That's all. We're, we got through the news. We did it. Reddit. Congratulations, everyone. Don't expect anything from me. Hey, KZ, what are you doing over the next week? I'm continuing to do the same things I've been doing in terms of uploads. So, Final Fantasy 15 uh, and Tales of Vesperia. Final Fantasy 15, I'm going to start getting to the point where I have to stop doing checklist shit in the open world and I'm just doing the story part. We're almost at that point. And then, the, uh, then it'll be like done in five hours. No, uh, because I'm also doing the DLC and I'm interweaving them together as a narrative. Oh yeah, where I cut, okay. I cut, I cut, I even cut back and forth uh, with perspective stuff. The example was uh, the episode Gladiolus thing. I'd do a little bit of that and then I would edit to uh, what was happening in the main story at that time because I thought, God, that that's more effort than Final Fantasy 15 deserves. It's the thing that they should have done in that game. Uh, so I'm doing it in my let's play. I'm like, I'm making this the game I want. <laughs> I'm going to fix this video game to me. See, I'm tr I, on, I feel I'm like they should at least give you the choice. But then I remember um, Batman Arkham City, where if you have the Catwoman DLC, it cripples the pacing of that game. Because like you get to a major story beat and you really want to see what's, ne what's next. It's like Catwoman segment. You have the DLC, do it. Well, it would have it would have helped 15 a little bit because there's just some parts where it's going either too fast or it's meandering way too fucking much. You could there's put some no different stuff in right, there. I've cut cut scenes that were in the game out of the Let's Play. Yeah, there's no such thing as pacing in that video game. Yeah, it, it's 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 something. It's something. I enjoy it, but you know, it has plenty of plenty of problems. Like, I would never say that combat is well realized in any way. It's it's fun to mash my way through it. But any large enemy, you go, this is fucking bad. <laughs> good thing I'm immortal. Yeah, good thing. Good thing. I just pack some items and no encounter will ever kill me. Oh, I just I'm I just also put on the I'm, uh, I'm, Magitek armor and clown through. I it. am. Uh, I would say I'm about 55 percent through that game right now, given like the chapters and stuff. I am about 30 levels above the suggested level of the final boss. Jesus. It just naturally happened. But Jesus. yeah, that's what's going on with me. Same old content. And uh, I got some cooler stuff happening uh, by the time the next podcast segment of this happens. But that's it for me. Oh, neat. I'm what's still up, Bill? You buying a slave? Uh, I'm still recovering from that stream. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, look, it, it, it's, it's so am I. Yeah, so is Bob. <laughs> Well, Bob has a reason. I'm sure I'll do. No he didn't I'll get do a vacation. I'm sure I'll do something between the time that you hear this and you hear the next one. But I'm not going to make any promises because the last time I did that, somebody went to the hospital. Yeah. So me. Um. But yeah. Uh. Something will come out of our channel. Don't ask me what. We're busy restructuring this fucking Gigaboots HQ. We're going to be in the middle of a bunch of shit. Uh. By like a vacuum. Nah, I'm good. Apparently, Dan's going to give Hook on the Sega CD a chance. <laughs> I can't do that until that one out. 
I can't do that until the Mega SD comes out. So it's going to be at least a month, and then I'll be in the middle of Banjo Kazooie. August? August? Yeah. I forgot about that. My bones are creaking. Yeah. Good. Well, KZ, it's all you. You pushed that whole bit. I didn't push that whole bit. Uh, Dan pushed an additional three aspects of that bit. Yeah, he did. No, it's, it's he could be forgiven for the third one, but the fourth and fifth really came out of left field. I mean, I'm perfectly fine with doing all of them, <laughs> but I I wasn't even pushing for nuts and bolts. I'm just like, play these two games. They're the they're the ones people like. The rest of them are people just want you to be un unhappy. <laughs> I, I like the part where someone threw down a shitload of money for the last game and said, what, what am I doing? And as he said that, I said, or as it happened, I yelled, what are you doing? <laughs> Not able to read what he, who had done it or what they wrote. <laughs> so, this is a really, this is a nightmare. Yeah, a little a bit. Nightmare. Early Banjo Pilot nightmare. will be fantastic. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All 12 minutes that it will last. <laughs> It'll be... That person won't sit down and have a long think after that one. <laughs> hey, now, the speed runs of that game are an hour and a half. <laughs> I can't, dude, I can't wait to see all that tech you're going to pull off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Banjo yeah, Pilot, I'm... any percent, world record, one hour and 16 minutes. Who the fuck would run it, let alone want KZ, to play it? KZ, KZ, ask him what the regular playtime is. KZ. I don't know what that the regular, regular playtime is. KZ. How you're long to beat? KZ, you know Vox. Vox is like a speedrun champ for Mega Man X6. Come on, man. Oh, it well, looks, it we looks have like damaged it friends. Looks like That's a normal a thing. Non, looks like a non-speedrun is like 20 minutes long. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's... <laughs> oh, I was thinking Banjo Pilot would be something like six hours. No. Oh, weird. Strange. Who would have who would have thought that this Game Boy Advance fucking Banjo Pilot game has very little content? <laughs> oh, if only it was like the true successor to Diddy Kong Racing, it'd be like a six to seven hour campaign. Y you know, the other versions of Diddy Kong Racing aren't even a good facsimile of Diddy Kong Racing. They should make another one of those. Uh, they really, they really, that DS one makes me so angry. It makes me angry too. Like, inst like fu fuck Star Fox Racing. Just let Retro make another Diddy Kong Racing. You know Tony no. Hawk HD. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just imagine that worse. Yeah, that's that's an accurate summary. That's, Didn't they that's add like Kong some Racing weird DS new is. aspect to the boss fights? Yeah. Yes. Also, also, you get your boost with touch mechanics and blowing into your into your DS mechanics, and I want to be dead. I'm yeah, done. No, super te <laughs> super terrible. Anyways, we'll see you guys later. Banana. Thanks for listening to this episode of Big Think Dimension. This show, like our other podcasts, is only possible with the generous time our co-hosts have given to us and the equipment we've bought to make it higher quality and easier to produce. Please consider supporting our podcast series on our Gigaboots Podcast Patreon and look forward to more Gamer Premonitions and Big Think Dimension in the future.